How's it going? My name is William, and this is my so-called life. On your new Singer Golden Touch and Sew machine. Dozens of exclusive features, like this new built-in needle threader for the golden slant needle and the push-button bobbin that winds right in the machine. What a wonderful new feeling. You can do all three kinds of sewing. Straight, zigzag, and chain stitch. Touch and sew, the push-button bobbin way. Come sew on one at your Singer Center. Choose from five Touch and Sew models from $149.95. What's new for tomorrow is at Singer Today. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? My name is William. Welcome to my so-called life. I'm adjusting my chair. Tonight I got the table out. Quite a few things I'm going to be making this evening. I hope everyone's doing well. Let's go sewing. <laughs> you know, it took me a while to want to... Um, yay! Hello, Joy! Hello, hello! 
I should really take my glasses off because I cannot see without them. <laughs> Yay! Hello, butterfly. Great to see you. Great to see you. Awesome. Yay, how's it going? It's going great. It's going great. I finally cut out patterns for my um, drape shirt. So I'm excited. <laughs> and I always say, I have no idea what's taking me this long. I do. I do. <laughs> Hello, Dixie. Great to see you. Great to see you. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Hello. Hello. Yay, hello. How's it going, Rashawn? Great to see you. Great to see you. I really have to keep my glasses off tonight. Do you know, as the um, temperature rises, my sons of sewing outfits going to change because it is getting hotter and hotter in here. <laughs> and if you hear buzzing, um, I am flying and in the clouds, but those are my fans. <laughs> Like literal fans. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's doing well. Jay Leto tonight, definitely. I am definitely going full Letterman Leno. But before I do that, very quickly, <clears throat> this program is for entertainment purposes only, and its content is not intended to malign any religion, lack thereof, race, company, individual, or wigs. All opinions expressed by my so-called life and program participants are solely their personal views and do not reflect the views of every single human being on planet Earth. I hope everybody has a great evening flying my so-called life airlines. And if you're feeling froggy, if you need an Activia, we have exits on both sides. That's Amaskirda and Derecha. I hope everybody has a great evening. <laughs> Yeah, hello, hello, awesome, awesome. It's so good to see everyone. I love it. I love it. Do you know I used to do that on my community posts, but after a while I was like, well, I think I'm like dragging this cliche a lot. <laughs> but I would do it before everything because in life I say so. So that's how I uh, break the ice in awkward situations. <laughs> Sons of Sewing is a great name. <laughs> well, I have, um, I always say House of Sewing, but Sons of Sewing makes me laugh. It makes me laugh. And if you're a Deep Space Nine fan, uh, Sons of Moog, I believe that episode will make you cry. It's a great episode. <laughs> yeah, hello, hello. Uh, Oh my oh gosh. Hello. <laughs> Yay. Don't no worries. No worries. <laughs> you know, I should I should move my um I have my Letterman desk out, but I've been doing a lot of rearranging in here. <laughs> and I refurbished a 32-inch television and um my adult supervision, Waternay, told me that I should give it away. And I did. I gave it to a righteous cause, the House of Sewing. It is now sitting right here. Eventually, I'll show it to you. But, <laughs> um, you know, for people who are sight impaired, such as myself, I need giant televisions in front of my face. Still not right. <laughs> You know what? Now that I'm sitting here on the table, I don't do this to oopsie shame myself. <laughs> oh, it always creates such a mess. Let me move my six cell mag light. You know, I've been discovering all kinds of fun stuff cleaning here, and this is a flashlight. <laughs> but... I've recently been oopsie shopping here and here and there. And you know, I'm not going to shame myself too hard, but it's okay if you have a habit and you do something you love. And I am completely justifying my habit right now. <laughs> Actually, you know what? There's no excuse. And I'm glad that I'm sitting here because I'm not going to pan my camera. But I have gone oopsie shopping and... Um, you know what's really funny? I'm not an excuse-driven person, so I'm not going to sit here and give excuses. But I absolutely love... Um... <laughs> here's, the, here's the deal. 
in California, when you go to Walmart, you have to ask somebody for anything now. If you want toothpaste, toothpaste is behind bars now. And you've always had to ask for fabric. But with the oopsies, with the oopsie aisle, it makes it less confrontational. Because when I hit that button, man, people turn that corner with their eyes rolling. They're resentful that I'm trying to buy fabric. And I'm not here to press anyone. But... <laughs> You deserve it for for the sale you got with the substitute flea market vendor. <laughs> I'm a haggler. I am definitely one of those people who loves to go back and forth with vendors. I sometimes I think it's um it's even less me wanting the item more than it's just in my blood to argue. In real life, I wouldn't walk around arguing with people. I kind of think it's pointless. But when but I love a deal. And I'm willing to um, go back and forth and do the dance with somebody in that sense. <laughs> Let me pull my serger out and kind of clear the table. Actually, I should pull my pins first. I'm like 10 steps ahead of myself. I'm actually proud of myself because I'm trying to shop my stash. That's one of the reasons I haven't gone downtown is... <laughs> To, to most people, when I say, oh, on average, when I go there, I buy like a hundred something yards. They're like, wow, that's a lot. To someone who sews, they're like, William, you're crazy. <laughs> so every time I go see Mr. Modelo, I get at least a hundred something yards because he gives it to me for like 50 cents a yard or, you know, a dollar a yard. So I go crazy. <laughs> But lately I've been I've been trying to um oh dang I will watch quietly until I figure out my my new keyboard. I completely understand there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's hard to navigate. I have a few computers and all different types of screens and tablets. Each one is intricate. Each one is difficult. <laughs> I'll be in the background. May doze off early. If I do have a good night, of course. Thank you so much for being here, Butterfly. What are you? Um, so what's everybody working on? What's everyone sewing? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Besides hanging out with this shrub. Do you know what? I saw something that was really strangely sad to me. Um, <laughs> the Arizona Coyotes, a hockey team, they're moving to Utah. So Utah is going to get a hockey team. And um, tonight is the last game of the Arizona Coyotes. And for some reason, it's really sad to me. I was listening in the in the car because I have satellite radio. And the um, they had the actual commenters, you know, the people who work for the organization. And one of the announcers, she said, you know, this team has been in my life since I'm three. She's obviously from Arizona. <laughs> But the other announcer started crying while he was talking. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, that's sad. Because, you know, you become part of an organization and it becomes part of your life. And it was just, it was, um, it was really sad. <laughs> and I'm in the car and I'm like, oh, man, this is really sad. This is way too much emotion for me right now. <laughs> But it was it was oddly sad. I used to live in Arizona. I've been I've actually been to a Coyote game or two. It was strange. It will it was it was really strange. Still putting sewing room back together. Then I have several dresses to tackle. Ah, I'm here for you, Joy. I'll be here for a little while. <laughs> it's always sad when a team leaves. Absolutely, I think that's what it is. And then, you know it. It's not just the people who are the players. It's the guy who's a hot dog vendor who's been there since the beginning. You know, Alexa, how long has the Arizona Coyotes been an organization? The Arizona Coyotes franchise has played 45 seasons, starting in 1979. 1979, that doesn't answer because they were another team before. Alexa, what year did the Arizona Coyotes come to Arizona? 
the yeah, we, we know they're the Winnipeg Jets. 1996, thank you. <laughs> it's just really sad. You're the best, William. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The whole community takes a dip. Exactly. <laughs> and Arizona is in a really bad place right now. People talk a lot of trash about LA. And as someone who lives in Los Angeles, when you see these overinflated videos of people who are like, look at this street, it's going downhill. It's all going downhill. They'll li they're literally in their car with a camera and they go down one street, make a left and they come back up and they go right down the same street. But Arizona is hurting right now. <laughs> Plus, you lose out because everyone tells themselves that they're gonna, they're going to a game soon. That is so true, and it made me laugh because the stadium was filled tonight. But they're playing in a college arena, and um, they looked hokey. That like when when you'd watch it on television, it looks hokey because um, the rink by my house could probably hold just as many people. <laughs> oh, awesome! Yay, I'm making a, a huswaf. Yay, and a needle roll. Oh, awesome, awesome. Hello, hello. How's it going, Nightmare Baby? Great to see you. Hello, hello. Yay, hello, Mona. Great to see you. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm just asking, what's everybody doing? What's everyone sewing? I'm finally working with the, with the drape material. Um, I loved how Alibaba said that this was in every hotel across uh, the world. <laughs> so I'm excited to work with this. I'm trying to dip in my stash because I have a ton of material. I almost oopsie shamed myself, but then I realized it, it would be a half an hour lost because I have a lot of fabric. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to have to do it. I apologize in advance. I have to put my glasses on so I can see the chat. <laughs> Yay. Hello, everybody. Yay. Hello. Hello. I hope everyone's doing well. The worst is how many times I see a restaurant or store closing that I was going to visit soon. You know, it's really funny you say that. Um, there's a donut shop by my house. I go to it out of loyalty because it's been there as long as I could remember. And I was telling my son recently how when I was in the sixth grade, I took the long way around, which is basically just walking past the shops. The elementary school is like in the neighborhood. It's incorporated. It's built old school. So I walked around and I got a slush puppy. The person who helped me still works there. <laughs> Her mom was the owner, but now she's the owner. And it's one of those things. She's one of the last businesses on this side of town that um, is still around after all these years. So I try to help out local businesses as much as I can before they go. There's some that have gone downhill and there have you. You have no choice but to stop going there. Yay. Hello. Hello. But it's sad. I, and I have weird loyalty, but it's more nostalgia because a lot of these places, um, I used to go with my parents when I was a kid, or I would go with friends. And moving back to, I always say moving back to my hometown was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. <laughs> but I still um, semi love this place, and there's a lot of nostalgia here. So, this is the material that I'm working with. <laughs> I made it a bit long. Oh man, this reminds me of every hotel I have ever been to i made it a bit long so we're gonna see what it looks like <laughs> and how it fits as well i'm i might um i might give it almost like the tunic the tunic taper and leave it open at the bottom but we'll see we'll see how it looks <laughs> Because I made this with my simplicity pattern S9158, and I can see it because I have my glasses on. But the thing is, is now that I think about it, um, this is a different size than my sweatshirt size, which I usually make a little bit bigger. So we're going to see how this fits. Yay. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. 
I'm on this weird kick. I found this vendor at the San Fernando Valley SWAT meet that sells really abstract material. And I found all kinds and all kinds of weird stuff. And these are definitely drapes. It's just a giant pile. And again, just like haggling for a price, I love going through um, giant piles of fabric. Which makes me wonder, where do they get this? Where do they get this? Because I want to go to the main source and find where they um, buy this. Because I'm sure I bought this. It was probably nine yards of this and another material for seven bucks. And this stuff is thick. This is like the coffee I drink. This is like milkshake thick. <clears throat> You need to you need to get clip on sunglasses, kill two birds with one stone. Well, when I had my blue blockers, everybody freaked out when I put my blue blockers on. Where are those things? I love those things. I wear them when I'm driving. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh man. You know I haven't worn these in a while because I'm literally knocking the dust off of these. You know, everybody makes fun of me when I wear these, but I love these things. <laughs> I'm on a new phone. Please forgive me for my pose. You know what? On a good day, because I'm a double thumber, I make so many mistakes. I make so many mistakes. Yay! Hello, Gilroy. Hello, hello. Oh, excuse me. Yay, great to see you, Gilroy. I'll probably pass back through. Thank you so much for stopping by, Rashawn. Great to see you. Great to see you. Everybody go check out Critically Drinking. Absolute amazing channel. Great conversation. Invoking thought. Something we need in today's world. And a good place because people are, they're not fighting each other. They're actually discussing things. So, awesome. Put a tracker on. <laughs> on God. <laughs> I did. I did. I still can't see with my blue blockers on. I know. I know. It's because I'm sitting in my Letterman chair. I have to wear my glasses. Yay. Hello. Hello. Without prompting either. I know. I know. You look like Harry. <laughs> you know what? Harry Carey was a like, I um, grew up in the VHS era. I have, I still have quite a few Harry Carey and Red Barber VHS. Wow, that's a reference I didn't think I'd be making this evening. <laughs> awesome. Hello, hello. Great to see everybody. Yay. So I'm going to bust out my serger. It's a bit shaky on this table, but, you know, I'm going to make, I'm going to uh, manage it. And I need to rearrange my serger station because. <laughs> because they keep on adding and adding and adding to that table so it is it's now um officially the serger station <laughs> so who's the first guest on late night with david sewing <laughs> well we can interview my coffee cup i've had this since 2019 and it's almost on its way out because the lid is getting kind of leaky and I'm sad to see it go because I'm loyal towards things. And with the way that things are so like cheaply made, um, I don't know if you saw that weird artillery, sh artillery shell looking coffee cup I had. I got it at the 99 cent store. And in retrospect, I'm glad I went crazy at the 99 cent store. I'm glad I went crazy and purchased a bunch of stuff. But um, with all this talk about lead testing and everything, I noticed after a week... I had it on my drying rack and I looked and it was rusty. <laughs> so I wonder how much lead poisoning that thing gave me. And are you going to throw any sewing machines off a five story town? <laughs> I would never do such a destructive thing. I would never um, be so angry. <laughs> are they cheaply made? Are you, are you just beating the hell out of things? Sometimes both. Sometimes both when it comes to sewing machines, sometimes both, but I am, I should be a sewing machine tester at this point. 
And that's a bobbin. <clears throat> All right. Yay! We um, how are you this evening, Kilroy? We definitely want to know how you're feeling. How's everything? Let me grab my pin. Oh, I have Shalimar stuck in my head. You could imagine um, the mood in here before the stream. <laughs> I try to chill out and I try to relax because I do a lot of driving throughout the day. There's just a lot of running around all day. And so this is the one time I get to chill out. So I put on, you know, I try to put on um, something semi-soothing. So it always ends up with Shalimar. You know, it's so funny because years ago, Midnight Star was my go-to. And I think I played it out. I think I truly play, and then I'm not saying like I'll never listen to it again, but I listened to so much that I uh, graduated to Shalimar. <laughs> All right. I'm actually excited. It's been a while since I've made something on stream, and I've been trying to get around to this. And these are two very distinct colors, so I will be able to distinguish which side is which. <laughs> Sometimes um, when I'm not wearing my glasses, I can't decipher and I have to literally mark it. You know what? Crickets out. If you can't fight it, feature it. The crickets are out. <laughs> it's, it was actually 81 degrees today. <laughs> feeling a little better still touch and go though and now that it's not winter anymore i don't want to move to <laughs> man the rent is even higher this time of year <laughs> oh that's so funny alexa what's a safe way to drive away crickets Here's something I found on WikiHow. To get rid of crickets, start by putting a spoonful of molasses in a bowl and filling it up halfway with water. Then, place the bowl in a room where you've seen crickets and wait for them to hop in and get trapped inside of it. You can also set out sticky traps and apply bug spray to corners and windowsills to <laughs> sticky keep crickets out of your house. Sticky traps are cruel. Since crickets can lay Alexa, thank you. Absolutely. Happy to help. You hear that, cricket? Good Wednesday. You hear that, cricket? Ah, it is, it, it, these are literal drapes. These are like extremely hardcore drapes. So this shirt will last forever. <laughs> you know, back when I first started um, making clothes, um, you know, on the regular, I started off with this, oh, my mic stand is not cooperating. I started off with like almost, I call it, um, pool cover material like extremely stiff material and it actually helped my sewing because it had crisp lines this was way before i had a serger and i would just line everything up precisely and it was perfect oh you stopped chirping huh oh he was just taking a breath <laughs> the Though with global warming, I may as well stay because we'll have California weather in 10, 15 years. You know, it's really funny. It's strange to us that we're actually having weather. So I agree. Because by this time of year, my food's already like growing, all kinds of stuff. And I've had to wait because it's been raining so hard, which is actually extremely good for the soil. But I, I've been planting actually the past couple of days. Farmer sewing is in full swing. <laughs> oh, and for the record, I found this giant thing of miracle Grow at my grandfather's house almost nine or ten years ago. I still use it in the plants still grow. It's blue. It's probably something nuclear. It's probably something toxic, but it grows every year. That stuff still works. <laughs> I'm actually shocked it's still over. And it's probably 20 years. It was probably sitting in his cabinet for 20 years when I found it. Oh, this cricket's driving me crazy. It's been raining really hard here. Neighbors, basement flooded. That's awful. That is the worst. 
sowing seeds. Oh, that's the new name of my my next punk band. Next to stage is sowing seeds. <laughs> Rain and tornadoes here. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, Mona. You know, it's crazy how the weather is different. Um, it's been awful here. Today was really one of the first days where we've had um, decent weather, where I feel like where I feel like the sun rays are, are uh, giving me a tan. <laughs> oh, you know what, Cricket? I'm not gonna let you ruin my stream. <laughs> And see what I was saying, like when um, with this, because it's so stiff, I have these lined up together and it's perfect. The edges are perfect. That's one of the, um, one of the reasons I loved working with this when I was um, even more of a rookie. I consider, you know, every day a school day. So people that call themselves experts, experts and professionals, um, I don't think I'll ever be one of those people. <laughs> Uh, perfect. Like I always say, I'm getting quiet because the fur when you when you line up at first, you gotta get that uncus pen in there for that perfect line. Perfect. Miracle grow <laughs> will last forever. I'm not playing. And I have the claw, like the actual claw from the infomercials. I have two of them because my grandfather bought one and my father bought one. I used 15 year old miracle grow. Thank you. That stuff is ancient. <laughs> Sowing seed sounds like a prime. <laughs> I like that. A cheap 70s boy. <laughs> well, the fabric soften. So this stuff will eventually soften. Um, I I talk about this all the time. I wash everything and this actually is not as stiff as it was this was like starch starch like old school levi's before everything was a fake stiff <laughs> that's an excellent excellent question mona because with certain material i think it's going to soften over time because i made a ton of um really oversized giant hoodies a couple years ago and they're still stiff <laughs> and if it, and if and i've washed them and i go skating all the time i sweat and sweat if they're still stiff after a day of me sweating in it and washing it a couple of times then i think that's where it lives <laughs> i've chosen to find blessings in something regarding of what the circumstances are i choose to look for something positive absolutely i have I have this outlook of no matter what, just keep going. Like, even today was kind of a testy day. <laughs> but um, I made it through it. You know, life happens. That's why I admire you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dixie. Thank you so much. <laughs> I try to stay positive. <laughs> oh. What's the point? Like, as somebody who obsessively watches YouTube, if you want to find something negative, just put on YouTube. <laughs> or somebody to find a cause you never heard of that you want to be angry about. They're, they're fighting that cause right now on YouTube. Oh, man, I forgot how it was to work with this stuff. It literally lines itself up. You know what? I'm going to pin on the, this side. Because this shirt, I'm going to let the serger edge this side. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back um, in stream yards or wherever I, whatever I have to do. And I'm going to give this credit, this credit, this cricket credit for this live stream. Because my special guest star is whatever cricket is hiding in the rafters in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh you know it's really funny dixie um i rely on crafty youtube like if you have a camera you know it's really funny i'm subscribed to people that scrapbook um i'm just i'm subscribed to people that make mosaics 
out of scraps. I'm subscribed to all kinds of people. I recently subscribed to somebody that uh, Mona put on her channel that painted a um, sewing machine. I was like, subscribe. You look like positive content. Subscribe. <laughs> If you want to find something negative, go read Amazon reviews. I was looking for a hydraulic wire crimper today, and the guy was going off saying one was junk. He used the 16-gauge dies on 4-gauge wire. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what's really funny, Kilroy? If you ever... Um, I my it's my real name on Amazon, but you'll know my uh, critiques. Well, it's all on denim and jackets, and I'll be like, "This is cheap," and I paid like five bucks for something. And I'm like, "This is poorly made." <laughs> but I am I am definitely one of those people that gives um gives content to people for Amazon reviews. You know what I think um. I have to check. I think I'm subscribed to that channel. I have to check. I will be here. I will be here. Never learned how to scrapbook. You know, um, I journaled for oof, oof, um, almost like 19 years or something crazy throughout my travels uh, pre-internet or we were, were uh, before everyone took pictures. I journaled everywhere I went. There are people who remember me for sitting down with a cup of coffee and ignoring everybody in writing. Um, I miss that. <laughs> that was before we all started talking to each other. All right. So let me grab my serger. And all right. So I'm going to grab my serger without toppling everything underneath it, around it. I can do this. It's kind of like that trick when you pull um, a tablecloth out without all the candlesticks smashing and the plates falling off, you know? It's part, of, it's part of Amazon. It's part of the Amazon addiction. Buy the cheap junk, review the cheap junk, and while you're on Amazon, buy more cheap junk. So true. So true. I actually gave myself a little bit of an intervention the other night. I put on Amazon and I had this total moment of like, so you're here again, huh? What do you need that you don't have? <laughs> oh, and I found something that I don't, that I do not need. Hey, skids, how's it going? How's it going? Great to see you. Great to see you. I hope everything's going well. Ra, ra. Hello, hello. Ra ra sewing machine. You inspired that short. And you know what's funny? If um in my shorts I um played the Ra Ra Rasputin song and it's blocked in a bunch of countries. So if you can see it, you probably live on this side of the globe. <laughs> my mom used to say that you will find exactly what you're looking for, whether it's negative or positive. Now I get it. It's true. My um, pops used to always say life is attitude because I had a stinky one when I was, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Even reason like this morning I woke up and I was like, ah, and you know, mayhem ensued. Dixie, my seventh grade history teacher had a poster with an Abraham Lincoln quote that basically said the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's true though. It's true. And I live by that, like that whole life is attitude. Be <laughs> I try to, I try to, I'm not perfect. And neither are you, Cricket, and neither are you. <laughs> oh, peak YouTube is me yelling at a Cricket. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, microphone's in the way. Perfect. <laughs> okay, and for my next trick, I'm going to take it off. I have a ton of... Well, should I leave it on the computer stand? I think I should. Should I leave it on the computer stand? It's going to really hop. 
and it's kind of in the way of the microphone. I um, inherited a studio and a bunch of computers and an entire computer lab. So I have a ton of these. <laughs> I have stands for everything. It's strangely convenient. <laughs> Perfect. The funniest thing about Amazon reviews is finding a product see a fan, fancy toothpaste and get a bunch of reviews on a different product like a toilet plunger that happens all the time don't trust everything you read online i love that quote i i love that quote and i also have a shirt oh i wish dog was here i have a shirt uh, i wear it once a year and it's um george washington and it says suck it england <laughs> you can see why i wear it once a year <laughs> Yay, hello, hello. Or you read the reviews and there's one guy that <laughs> that the guy clearly got lost and he thinks he's reviewing the multi the multimeter when he's reviewing a toaster. That I, those I love those. You know, you guys are making me feel better. Seriously. Because I thought I needed professional help because I love reading Amazon reviews. <laughs> I get lost in Amazon reviews. And the funny thing is, if I'm iffy about something, um, if I'm iffy about something, I go straight to the reviews, especially um, because I'm terrible. Okay. I bought another backdrop and I wanted to buy this big desert backdrop. I thought it was a huge backdrop. My leaf backdrop, I have two of them now. They're seven feet long. They're huge. You know, and they're about my height. You know, they're seven feet and they're six feet tall. And so long story short, I ordered this. I'm really bad at ordering things on Amazon. And so I checked the reviews now, the dimensions. I <laughs> always trust the math. Yes, my phone connection is logging. So I'll be a time traveler tonight. There's nothing wrong with that. We are, uh, this is a convention of time travelers. Welcome, welcome. Or you get the review that the person clearly didn't know how to use it and broke it. And like, <laughs> okay, to be fair, Gilroy, to be fair, um, I'm a bit rough with stuff. And so sometimes that happens with me. I'm like, how does this open? And I hear a crunch and I break it in the package. And I'm like, I did that. I did that. <laughs> oh. Or they bought the wrong thing, tried to use it anyways, and it didn't work. <laughs> oh, because I order a lot of clothes, the number one complaint I see is um, said item doesn't fit. Okay, so I'm not saying that I'm a big city lawyer or a professional, but at this point in the game, I'm a sewist, okay? So it's a bit cheating. I know my dimensions. And one of the reasons I started knowing my dimensions is because I ordered stuff online. I was real. I I was a holdout. I was one of those people who refused to order anything online because I thought it was crazy. I, I was one of those people. <laughs> and um, I've learned that a lot of people do not know their dimensions. And it's okay. You don't have to tell people. Measure your head. Measure your wrists. Measure your arms. See what your dimensions are. So when you order clothes, you're not on Amazon. And um, you end up in a place like this where people like us are making fun of you. <laughs> I, uh, I measure myself all the time. And it's not like I'm like growing or anything. It's this part is growing. <laughs> and I've noticed... Um, because I've been making clothes all the time now for almost four, actually no, even longer because a, a lot of my, my crazy sewing creations that are on Twitter are from like 12 years ago, if not longer, but, um, I've been making clothes for a while and you know, your, your size goes up and down. Mine does depending on what time of year it is. And everybody thought I was kidding that I said after, um, October, I let myself go <laughs> And I gained a few pounds last year. 
<laughs> Guilty. It's okay. I am too, Dixie. Um, I, you know, I did a whole video about adding, um, adding something to a denim vest. I freaked out knowing that I ordered already ordered from this company and the vest that came was kind of tiny. It was a triple XL and it barely made it past my belt. And, and like in the vest world, you want a vest that fits. <laughs> I ordered a bucket hat off of Amazon once. My head is so big. It was basically a yarmulke. <laughs> well, Unlike the belly, that part doesn't get bigger as the arm goes on. <laughs> I expect you to telepathically know my size. <laughs> oh, I'm like that too, though. You, well, um, buying fan, well, not fancy hats. I last year I bought quite a few fitted hats. My son, it all started because my son was like, um, I'm a Raider fan, which he has been for a while. And um, I really don't have a team anymore. Be well, I watch the Rams because they're in LA and it's on TV on Sundays. Um, I'm not kidding you. My mother bought me a Todd Gurley jersey. I wear it just because it says Gurley on the back. So I'm really not into football. But my son was like, hey, I want to get a hat. So we went to this place by my house. Boy. <laughs> We went to this place by my house, and um, I was like, when's the last time you bought a Dodger hat? I, you know, I was asking myself, and I bought one Dodger hat. I bought a blue one. Then I bought a red one. I came back the next week, I bought a red one. And then I came back the next week, and I bought a black one. <laughs> Raiders fan, my condolences. <laughs> It's beat, man. You know what? You know where I live. Skits Raider Nation is quietly strong here. It's so sad when the Rams play. Um, it's just a sea of black jerseys. It's it, it's sad. It's kind of like when the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Pittsburgh Steelers literally buried the San Diego Chargers as an organization on their last season. Um the Steelers were playing the um, at the time the San Diego Chargers, which are now the Los Angeles Chargers. <laughs> Long story short, so many people showed up in black and gold. It was a home game. I'll never forget that interview. The Steelers, at the end of the game, the Steelers were walking around San Diego thanking people because so many Steelers fans showed up. You couldn't even see the Charger fans. <laughs> it's actually sad. <laughs> Hell, I was listening to a Cleveland uh, a Cleveland Guardians game yesterday just because it was on the radio. I do that. I love that. I, I'm not an Anaheim fan, but I'll listen to a Duck or an Angel game if it's on, if it's on the radio. I, in my car, all of my AM um, state, you know, I have it tuned to certain things. And it's all, you know, a lot of it's sports. Yay. Hello. Hello. Uh, don't mess with this steel curtain. It was crazy to see. I that's a memory that was like seared in my skull. I was like, that is embarrassing. Hey, CF Beauty, how's it going? How's it going? Great to see you. Great to see you. Awesome. Awesome. Hello. Hello. The Dodgers are like that. They travel extremely well, especially like when um the San Francisco uh, Giants are not playing well. They show up in mass. Dodger fans show up in mass. Oh, God. I was talking about the bloody, bloody doc. Oh, did he? And the guy didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> Yay. Hello, hello, hello. Awesome. Awesome. Great to see you. Bloody sock. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> awesome. Yay. Hello. Great to see you. Great to see you. I should get started. Let me um, configure how I'm going to do this. I always leave the hood to last because I've said this a hundred times. This table kind of keeps me honest from making a giant hood. Yay. Hello. Hello. 
Have a great night, Mona. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Great to see you. And I'm not kidding. Everyone at my job um, knows who you are. You're you're famous in California because we watch your live streams. <laughs> awesome. Kurt Schilling World Series. Duh. Oh, the Arizona game. Yes, the Arizona. No, it wasn't Arizona. I'm sorry, because he played for Arizona. That was the when he played for um, Boston. Yes, yes. See, those were good. Those were amazing games. Now, that's something that's within memory. All right. So we're going to find out right now how this surgery is holding up because I added new needles. <laughs> As you can see, I completely rethreaded this thing. And I have this upside down. All right. I should probably start from the other side, but you know, we're pirates here. This table hops so much. I wonder what it was made for. The legs are um, kind of steel, but they're hollow. But if there was ever a machine that was uh, made for this table, it um, I wonder what this was made for. Oh, that's beautiful. It works. And of course, I forgot my scissor. <laughs> I'm so glad I put that um, in my notes. You know, with all the... Um, Oh, is that gross now? Okay, good. With all the fuzzy material that I work with, um, I always laugh when I see fuzzy material out in the wild. And today, I saw a grown adult wearing fuzzy spats. But I'm not one of those people that takes pictures of people, and they were far away. So I was like, you know what? I'll just write this one down. <laughs> but the, the furry revolution is out there, at least where I live. <laughs> And in a really weird way, um, Jankos as well. Jankos are everywhere here. It makes me laugh. It, it makes me laugh of all styles on earth. The Jankos are back. At least I can participate in that. Like I said, when flat tops came back, I was so mad because I've been bald for 20 years. Perfect. Perfect. Freeze is one thing I will never understand. <laughs> you know, where I live is an extremely eclectic place. So it takes all kinds here. And I was really tripped out when I saw someone wearing furry spats. I almost was like, hey, um, I know a guy that'll make you even more of those things. It, it's so funny. And the one thing that trips me out, and my son was the one who noticed this because he's really good with numbers. And um, he has a memory like mine. When he was younger, that same material was like 10 bucks a yard, 11 bucks a yard. The whole furry thing happened where furries got popular. And then after the plague, all of a sudden, um, this material right here, everywhere I went except for Joanne's, was $50 a yard. No, no, I'm so sorry. I went to Hobby Lobby. Everywhere except for Hobby Lobby was $50 a yard. And I got that on sale. I, I waited until it was on sale. <laughs> so they jacked the price up because it's popular. And I mean, really jacked the price up. There's um, a place in downtown. I think it's kind of she-she anyways. But it's a really popular um, fabric store. It's been in a million movies. You've probably seen it in a movie and not even known. But they have the most overpriced fabric for, um, I don't know if you can see the coat, the multicolor furry stuff behind me. 
They wanted 70 bucks a yard. I got that from Walmart for like, was it Walmart? It was, was it Walmart? I don't even remember now. I got it for nowhere near that price. Nowhere near that price. <clears throat> we'll all agree we like your glasses. Well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I am extremely self. It's not even self-conscious. It's just one day I um, stopped wearing my glasses and I just got used to it. I wear them for driving. I wear them when I, you know, as a necessity because I care about people. He almost looks respectable. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> hey, we're pirates here. We're not going for respectable here in the house of sewing. Do you know what? I am playing this dangerous game of sewing with my serger and trying to not let the mouse fall off the table. <laughs> and not make a giant error at the same time. Oh man, this shirt is going to be stiff. Oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, I keep on knocking stuff into my trash can. Okay, trash can's getting moved. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> almost. I almost look respectable, Kilroy. Almost. All right. Do you know what's so funny? I've been messing with my camera angles. My computer, ever since the update, it's been rejecting a lot of the stuff. It's been giving me a hard time with my external hard drive. So I've been unplugging a ton of stuff. And I know what Kilroy is going to say. You're not supposed to plug 75 things into a laptop. But then why do they make um, those drives with 75 plugs on them? Huh? Answer me. Riddle me that. Riddle me that. <laughs> Man, it is hot in here. Do you think my serger attracts the cricket? <laughs> I'm going to give the cricket a uh, special guest appearance credit. Good grief. You know when it's that time of year when the temperature changes, the crickets come out in mass. My house is infested with crickets. I'm not kidding you. When I sit here, they're in the rafters. I'll be sitting here and they fall on my desk. And it's like a bad scene out of a movie where they're like, hi. <laughs> they make them for charging a lot for USB devices at once. They come with heavy duty power supplies. They do. They do. Especially the ones I have. They're more industrial. Because... <laughs> Somebody I knew was was extremely forward, uh, future thinking. Okay, so I love how this piece comes out on the serger, okay? But I'm not necessarily the best working with this, so this is going to be funny. Because I'm constantly pulling it as it's surging, and I'm also trying not to pull. Because if you pull on any machine, you will help the needle break. So while it's sewing, if you're pulling on it, it will eventually break the needle. So I'm trying to not do that. <laughs> all right. But I'm going to edge all of this now so I don't have to do it later. Let me see if I can get an assembly line going. And the problem is, too, is that I'm left-handed. So this is, like, backwards to me. Pulling it with my right hand is completely backwards. All right, I'm just going to let it fly. Okay, that's the important part because that's the seam it needs to get rid of. Which it's... <laughs> oh, the intricacies of sewing. Yay, welcome back, welcome back. Oh dear, perhaps a fogger will help. 
it's it's you know what the temperature is um rising and i'm gothic <laughs> i wear black long sleeve every day i'm just gonna have to get over my ways look at you <laughs> industrious and you're glad why hello polish and assemble hello hello why hello I'm not even going to look because I know what Joy is saying without even looking <laughs> because I have my glasses on. I saw. <laughs> Yay. Hello. Hello. I like the thank you, Dixie. Thank you. Do you know what it is? It's me not accepting aging. I am one of those people. I didn't know. It's one of those things you don't know. It's going to happen to you until it hits you. And I. I don't accept aging. <laughs> I do not accept aging. I will fight it. I'm going to put oil bowl lay on my arms. I'm going to fight it tooth and nail. <laughs> so wearing my glasses makes me... Um, good grief. Sometimes that kid. Sometimes that kid. Wearing my glasses makes me feel my age. Perfect. Makes you able to see. <laughs> that is true because I literally, like it's strange to me that I can look and actually see the chat from here. Oh, perfect. That went perfect. That is a complete revolution around. Beautiful. Do you know what's really funny? When I said I miss my cricket, it was that really cheap phone I had from Portland. Not the cricket in my house. <laughs> oh, good times. Okay. So those do not need to be sewn on right now. I know the arms are over here somewhere. They were both jabbing me as I was sewing. Perfect. <clears throat> Alexa said, um, man, I am already all hot and sweaty. Alexa, what's the temperature right now? Right now, it's 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, man. I am going to fry this summer. Um, the other day, I was like, man, it's so hot. I am dying. I looked in the car, and it was like 70 degrees. And I was like, I am not going to be able to hang during the summer. Now, now I just have hot time summer in the city stuck in my head. I guess I'm going to edge the cups right now because that's a bad habit I have. I constantly forget to edge my cups, but let's be real. I love that hobo look. I love that like wimpy 1920. When I say wimpy, I mean wimpy from Popeye. I love that look with the pork pie hat with the frumpy coat. 73 is my comfort zone. It's perpetually 70 degrees here, so I'm trying not to gripe. But when it gets cold, like, you know, I slowly acclimate to that weather. And I love wearing sweaters. Let's be real, you know, I'm the, the, the coat guy. Oh, that mouse is... Inside and 70 outside. I'm like, I think a lot of people are, I'm biased towards the warm weather though, because I'm a Southwestern American. <laughs> so I prefer the hot weather. I'm sure people, there's people in other places that are like, oh man, I prefer it to be cold. It, but I recently watched a video 
of uh, somebody that I respect, and they flat out said, they're like, man, I have cabin fever. I need to get out of the house. And I actually respect that. Oh, these are just big enough to go on here. Oh, I don't think they're going to make it. You know what? We're going to go with the stringy style because I'm not going to stress out over that. Humidity is the difference. You know what? It's that that is one thing. It's more dry here. It's really not humid. Not like there <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, I took a trip during in February from my area to Brownsville, Texas. It was humid in Texas. It was humid in February. I mean, humid. <laughs> and I know all the Texans will laugh at the Californian, but that humidity it is a big difference. And Brownsville is pretty south from where I live, like extremely south. I love outside, but only within my confines. <laughs> That's this time of year. I love going in my backyard. And the funny thing is now I have all these mousy neighbors. It's so beautiful. When I put my in, when I put my fountain on, I can't hear them. I had a neighbor next door that lived there for 20 something years. That man was comfortable. And he, ugh. but I have really mousy neighbors. So it's so peaceful now. So peaceful. <clears throat> All right. Let me. Um, what should I do with my coat? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to put it on something else for a minute because I need the dress form. <clears throat> oh, man. This coat is definitely going in my greatest hits. <laughs> ah. Oh, and um, uh, don't tell Waterney. But she was 100% correct about costume satin being extremely hot. <laughs> and not like the, oh, that's hot, hot. It's hot. You know, before I um, pull out my dress form, I completely forgot about this. I've had this um, for probably a year, year and a half. I cut this uneven. I got really mad, really mad and frustrated, and it went, I was going to make a vest. The This came from Waverly Patterns, the patterns they have at Walmart. And so, um, <laughs> nobody tell water day. And so, <laughs> I've got this feeling. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm singing Footloose early. But I made this from those weird Waverly patterns they have at Walmart. But I cut this so uneven. I put it on a hanger, and I was so mad at myself. I even tried to overcompensate with, like, adding more material on this side. You can't even tell. But I'm going to surge this. I'm just going to call it a day and surge it and see what it looks like. I had full intentions of making this just as a vest. Only as a vest. But um, I made a huge mistake on this. But look at the look at the lining. <laughs> this was definitely um, summer clothes. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna edge this real quick. I completely forgot about this, but I I put it on the hanger because I knew eventually I would be walking over there. And I'm really interested to see what this is gonna look like. And you know what? After all the mistakes I've made on this, I'm just gonna um, surge it with black thread and move on with my life <laughs> and i'm gonna try this thing on because it's gonna be laughable you know not everything's a winner and this one definitely was uh, i don't even know what i was thinking there's a sweater in here that i was working on and i just kind of stopped I don't even know what happened that day. And I found it and I'm like, 
I don't even know what was so difficult. And the funny thing is I came back the next day and finished everything I needed to, but I still haven't attached the arms. So this one's definitely going to um, get some help. He hasn't been industrious since Clinton was president. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you know, what's so funny. I was not kidding you when I said I was going to come in here with a leaf blower today. I opened up the big door. I covered as much as I could. And I came in here with a leaf blower. There was fur everywhere. And the stuff, even the multicolor fur that I, you know, that's two or three projects ago, if not four or five projects ago. <clears throat> it's funny how that works out. <laughs> As I snuggle with a golden aw doodle dog on each side of me, we are not alike at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I um, have touch and sews al aligned on my bed. It's just um, a nothing but touch and sews. Oh, now I have the commercial stuck in my head. On your new touch and sew. The new sewing machine by Singer. Touch and sew. Oh, I'm grabbing the... <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know why I had this weird thing about buying singer stylist. I think when I finally snapped and went full office space is when all the people who had like stylist touch and sews, um, just that entire 1960s, 70s era, all that stuff was in thrift stores. I think I just came that right, that, that right sweet spot. And now I own an army of touch and sew sewing machines. Stylus. <laughs> but I watched Fred Sanford sewing machine and um, I don't have as many sewing machines as he does. So I'm okay. <laughs> and by the way, if you, if you see me in Michigan, don't be surprised because I am going to go visit that guy. I just have to figure out, uh, how much it's going to cost to drive the U-Haul down there <laughs> and back. <laughs> Alexa, how far is Michigan from California? From California, Michigan is 2,261.5 miles away by car. But is there salt on your glass? <laughs> Field trip, absolutely field trip. <laughs> Notice I didn't ask if you're gonna burn the the doing oh the doing shack down if you don't call an electrician you're already gonna do <laughs> Oh you know what's really funny? I keep on saying I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move, and then I buy more stuff, I add more stuff, I plug more stuff in. I do need to be in an industrial area for science, just for science and the safety of everyone. <laughs> Not tonight, too much salt. <laughs> and so um, now I have Love Shack stuck in my head. And we know that Waternay loves the B-52s. Love Shack, baby. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to stay there until Hands inherits the house? No, I want to bet. <laughs> no. No way. <laughs> no 
no way. I want to move far. You know, I made the mistake of moving back to my hometown, so there's no way I want to stay here. Okay, I have to pay attention to this so I do not rearrange the neckline on this. I have to remember which direction I'm going. <clears throat> Oh, right. <laughs> I'm shocked the mouse has not fallen off the table yet. Oh, we have contact. Good, good, good. Perfect. Now, this was just a project that I wanted to do on stream. And still to this day, I don't know why this was such a mess. This was just going to be a quick um, idea. And I messed this up royally. Definitely gonna see how this comes out. Okay. And just for S and giggles, I'm going to surge the arms. Everybody gets a quota of how much they're allowed. Oh, they're allowed to move around. You blew pastures decades ago. I, you know what? Now I have the I've lived everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. I, I have, I have, I have been quite a few places. I'm kind of surprised William stays focused on his sewing project. <laughs> it's because I guilted myself because the last couple of streams, like I, I'm all about waffling. I'm all about waffling and, um, but I'm actually a sewing channel. I have opinions about everything. I've said this, like, that's why I don't talk about politics too much about a lot of things, because at the end of the day, I'm one less person trying to push my opinion on the Internet. My real agenda <laughs> is to bring back customer service <laughs> because I'm a real life Karen. Can we be nice to each other enough to like, I just want to buy some fabric. I just want to buy some fabric. Let's be real. <laughs> That line from Suicide Tendencies of I just wanted a Pepsi man, it's still relevant to this day. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Perfect. But I've been a few places, but I haven't lived everywhere. <laughs> the only focus he might have has, <laughs> was made by Ford and even that I'm not sure do you know what's funny um, that's probably the only Ford vehicle I haven't owned I've owned quite a few Fords we I am the <laughs> George Kisten. the older I get do you know what's funny in life you just, you, everybody thinks they're Seinfeld Everybody thinks they're Seinfeld, but the older you get, you realize you're either Elaine or George. <laughs> and if you're really kooky, Kramer. Uh, but uh, George Costanza is a hero of mine. On my route, Mount Rushmore, it will be George Costanza. <laughs> Ah, every once in a while, I realize you're working on a project. <laughs> See, that's the thing. See, that's the thing. I can talk and sew. I, I'm from that era where people would be like drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes and making things. So I can do two things at once, kind of. But now I'm going to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lame hair, but I like to think I'm way less neurotic. Oh, you're totally... Now that you hopped in, you are totally Elaine, and I am uh, George Costanza, and Seinfeld rolled into one. <laughs> I loved that show. I did you? Were you a regular watcher? No, but I would watch it sometimes. I'm equal parts Kramer, Elaine, and George. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I am definitely Seinfeld because I complain about everything. <laughs> So I'm definitely Seinfeld. I definitely dance like Elaine, aka enough to make people want to call a mental hospital. So true. Don't feel bad. I learned. Um, I unironically do the Carlton. 
<laughs> like unironically. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello. How is everyone doing tonight? I didn't get to say hi in the chat because I was trying not to take too much time after my mom left. Oh, bless you. I literally brought the leaf blower in here today because I've been sneezing so much. And this wall of fluff just went out my garage door. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So if my neighbors are sneezing, I'm going to look the other way because I created that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> look up the Jimmy Fallon clip where he does the dad dances with Chris Christie. Those are the only dances I'm good at. You know, the other day I was um, on Critically Drinking and, and like, I realized, like, I unironically do a couple dances. I do the Carlton with the, but Courtney Cox invented that in the Bruce Springsteen video. Guns for hire, we're just dancing in the, the boss, the boss. <laughs> You know, I'm so so from the suburbs that um, I can't believe I'm admitting this. I had a Born in the USA concert t-shirt. <laughs> and I would wear it to school to the point where my mom was like, can we frame this? And you're outgrowing <laughs> this. And you're outgrowing this. Oh, now I have the boss in my head. <laughs> I found out somewhat recently that um, the E Street Band used to play for Chuck Berry when he would tour. Paul Schaefer played with um, Chuck Berry. I mean, um, no, isn't isn't the E Street Band Bruce Springsteen's band? Yeah, Paul Schaefer was in the E Street. Was band. he? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I forgot that. Okay, I, so I don't know if Paul Schaefer was there at the time, but Bruce Springsteen's band, um, they used to play for Chuck Berry. Oh, that's so awesome, Dixie. I saw The Boss twice live in Houston. Ooh. All of my, like, I've seen them as, like, Swedish death metal, Slayer. Oh, I saw Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> In a bunch of festivals. I've been to a bunch of festivals. And a bunch of Rock the Bells before LL Cool J owned it. I'll be right back. Sorry. We're just dancing in the dark. <laughs> you wouldn't think it from leading a late night band, but Paul Schaefer is extremely accomplished. I mean... And Kilroy knows Paul Schaefer is extremely accomplished to the point where Letterman used to make fun of him when certain people would come in. He'd be like, look, we know you're in the band, but you work here now. <laughs> I miss Letterman. I do. I truly miss. But I think it's because those were my formative years, you know. One of the clips I enjoyed most from Letterman was when... Um... Um, Sly Stone was on. That was great. Talking about the, he had good interview clips, and Paul Schaefer was just loving playing with him. That was good. Oh, see, now I'm thinking of, I watched Letterman until the last show. I absolutely loved that show. Do you still watch him on his um, cable something or other? I did for a little bit, but 100% disclosure, he looks like a union general. <laughs> he looks like he's going to go look for Custard. We haven't heard from Custard in a while. Send Letterman. <laughs> Send Letterman in that beard. <laughs> he looks like he's in the Connecticut regulars with that beard. <laughs> and you, you can't get past the beard for his... Interview skills? No, no. It was, you know what it is? Um, you know, something happened to me. This happened with a lot of people. Like, um, I want it's so weird for someone who's stuck in the past and is obsessed with nostalgia. Sometimes I want new things. And Letterman was interviewing the same people. Mm. I've already seen these interviews. Mm. <laughs> 
did did you know Letterman could grow a beard like that? I did. He looked like <laughs> he looked like a, a general. You know, he looked like a, a Civil War era general. <laughs> Alice Cooper and Donnie Mind in the in the same years. Do you know? I met Alice Cooper. He is one of the most astute, well spoken, nice human beings on planet Earth. And yes, he really looks like that. I've heard that about him from other people, too. He is the nicest. I lived near him. He was the nicest guy. He was the nicest guy. And or like he's in the Spanish-American War. So true. So <laughs> true. He looks crazy. Donnie Osmond. You know, what are you eating? I made um, shortbread for my mother. And she generously left me two pieces <laughs> <laughs> my mother thinks all the shortbread belongs to her but <laughs> let me check something really quick i do pay money for hockey to be on every channel but tonight is the last game of the arizona um coyotes and it's kind of sad i was listening to the newscasters in the car and like one the team, you know, it's so funny. I I asked the A word, and the team, um, <laughs> the team started there in 1996, and she's like, the team came when I was three years old, and I'm like, oh, you make me feel old. But she's <laughs> a newscaster for the team, and then the guy who's the original newscaster came on, and he started crying. They're moving to Utah, the mm -hmm. so they're gonna be not the Utah Coyotes, though they're gonna name it something else, but. I was Cooper. They well, they they when they move organizations, they change the name. Like the Coyotes used to be the Winnipeg Jets, and then they gave the Jets an organization again. So the Jets exist now, but the Coyotes technically are the old Winnipeg Jets. But okay. in Winnipeg, they have a team. Or okay. yeah, it's complicated. Sports is complicated. Alice Cooper is like Dean is like D Snyder put on the hardcore act, but he's actually sharp as a tack. There's quite a few metal heads that I've met that are like that. Quite a few. Well, look at the, um, the guy from offspring. He's got like a doctorate in biochemistry or something. Like Old that. enough to see Elvis too. Do you know, I wanted to see like, um, Vegas Elvis. That's what, like, if, if I ever get my time machine, I'm going to go get my fake cigarette because I don't smoke cigarettes at all anymore. They destroy me. <laughs> I'm going to get my fake cigarette and go sit in the lounge and watch uh, watch Elvis. Because 70s Elvis was lit. Literally. What's up, DJ Doze? How's it going? How's it going? Hello. Great to see you. Great to see you. I hope your night's going well. We're just hanging out. I'm finishing a few projects. So who all is here tonight? I didn't really get to have a good look. I'm finishing this vest. I started this vest years ago. I cut the middle wrong and I got really discouraged and I put I put it on a hanger and put it on my in the rack in the in the closet. Mm. It's uneven. You'll see when I put it on. It is like like fashion school uneven. <laughs> Can you even it out? I, we're going to see if any of my, um, if anything worked because I've cut it. I did all these crazy things. And I know that, uh, can you even say the Cosby show on YouTube? I know that show's canceled, but there's an episode where I can't even, where what's your name makes the shirt for Theo. So every time I mess up on something, I think of that one episode of that uh, when she's trying to make him a designer shirt and he puts it on. He's like, what is this? <laughs> I didn't see that episode. Oh, I'll show it to you. I'll, when this is over, I'll show it to you. Or if it's, I did, maybe I forgot. <laughs> it was also, like, let's be real. Like, that that was, like, from the either... That was from the 80s episodes. Like, the 1980s episodes. So that's a law, you know. I, I don't expect everyone to be a television savant like I am. <laughs> What's everyone? How's your night? How's everyone's night doing tonight? Pretty good. We have some people haven't seen in a while tonight. Today's been a um, today's been a Monday and it's Wednesday. 
<laughs> and I tried to I tried to put my blue blockers on with my glasses on. I can see the chat, but with my blue blockers, I can't see the chat. But it blocks out all the blue light in this room. <laughs> I'm blue light, every other color light too. It's a wonder you can see anything at all. But these are like these are wannabe blue blockers. Do you remember the blue blocker commercial, the infomercial back in the day? I remember the like the Polaroid polarized lenses one. Or there, the, yeah. <laughs> Does anyone in the chat remember blue blockers? There was a commercial they put. Oh man, I feel like. <laughs> Do you know when I'm driving? Um, Especially when I'm wearing my glasses, people look at me. I'm that guy that turns and looks at you like, yeah, I'm wearing these goofy glasses. What's up? Like, I'm wearing these goofy, goofy glasses. <laughs> oh, I felt like Tuesday all day today. Mm -hmm. I saw Elvis at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Do you know what's so sounds... funny? Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Go ahead. That just sounds like it would be amazing. I went to a rodeo in beautiful Long Beach, California, and I saw Warren G. Shout out to... <laughs> you know, it's funny because he constantly raps about where he's from, and I went there, and I saw him in his hometown. So I was like, you really are from here. <laughs> and he and Warren G. loves barbecue and rodeo. <laughs> That's awesome, Dixie. That's awesome. Your hump day wasn't humping, not at all. <laughs> I wish it was not at all. <laughs> I should have stayed in bed and not picked up my telephone. That's the kind of day it was. Yes, DJ is hump day. <laughs> Need some Viagra for real. And if it's standing for four hours, I got to go to the doctor. Blue blockers for fishing. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, I, I constantly talk about how I grew up with, like, positive, real men, like, non-weirdo people. And I used to go fishing with people. And they were old-timers. But they were like, hey, if you're up at 4.30 in the morning, we can go. And I would wear blue blockers and watch the sun rise up over the my local lake. Those are good memories. Mm. In all the years I went fishing, I only caught, like, two or three <laughs> But it was the camarad it was the camaraderie of hanging yeah. out, you know. And I hung out with a generation that's not around anymore. None of those that whole generation is aged out, you know. So yeah. their stories and all their crud lives on in me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never been to a rodeo, but I have been to plenty of truck and tractor pulls. Do monster truck rallies count? Um Aw, my son's all old and jaded now. Once a year, we'd go to Anaheim, California and watch the monster trucks. <clears throat> they do it at the Staples. Well, I'm sorry, the Crypto Arena now. No longer the Staples Center. Mm. But they do it there, but it's not like um, in Anaheim. It was like the drive, the food. There was this one Mexican restaurant we'd always go to that's near Disneyland. I was more uh, I was more amazed at the amount of security. <laughs> hmm. Hey, Elvis had an entourage. See, and Warren G, I walked right up to him. And you know what he didn't do? My lovely co-host, you know what he didn't hmm. do? He didn't shush me. Well, did he give you a million dollars like Lenny Kravitz did? I wish, you know, if I tell my story enough, I'll make a million dollars off of that story from Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> it's going to be so funny when he um, he gives me a big hug and calls me <laughs> an exagerado. And says, sir, let's tell the real story, sir. I was young, but I saw the sex, huh? Sex appeal of Elvis. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Monster chugs are whippy compared to tractor pull. <laughs> Fishing is is my getaway from my wife. I took her one day, and the worms and the mosquitoes took care of the rat. <laughs> oh, you're um, you're robotic. <laughs> Remember, Tom Jones was too sexy for TV. Do you know, I watch a lot of hockey and 
um, the Las Vegas Golden Knights still bring out Wayne Newton. <laughs> I forgot he was around. I'm going to reload. Okay. With the tractor pull, there's actually a chance something will blow up or break in half. Okay. 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 I think I, you know what it is? I don't think I've, I've been to one that wasn't in California. We used to have a lot of, um, we used to have a lot of, um, funny car races. And what's that when the cars are hitting each other? Um, demolition derby. When I was a kid, I like my mission was to buy a crummy car and join the um, thing by my house. But man, they, they stopped doing the demolition derby in the early nineties. They're actually tearing that place down because they, uh, it was where our swap meet was, but guess what they're building there. Um, single family houses really close together with wimpy tiny yards and ones that cost $2 million each. This is the Pee Wee Herman thing where the clock's talking, the couch is jumping, everything, everything's moving. Yep, you, you won a giant ball of foil. <laughs> Absolutely, does. But there, man, that swap meet thrives because I'm an early riser, and I when I go to that one because it's local, I bring my truck. Um, because you can park in the dirt, and you can tell all the trucks are parked in the dirt, but like. It thrives, and they're getting rid of it. It's just the dumbest thing to build uh -huh. houses. Demo derbies, been to lots of those, too. I miss those. That's, like, part of my childhood. I want to go to a destruction derby. My dream. Well, I wanted to get a station wagon because anybody of a certain age knows that those things were tanks. So my, like, seven-year-old brain was like, all right, I want to get a station wagon <laughs> and reinforce it. Oh, that sounds. You, I thought I heard you earlier saying that you were fighting getting old. That is one surefire way to get really old feeling really fast. <laughs> You're getting hit by other cars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I even saw Inker Bert Humperdink, and I was on a date that made me really feel old. <laughs> <laughs> I had to slow down to say that man's name, Engelbert Humperdinck. Now that is some speech therapy. <laughs> What's really fun to watch are figure eight races. Instead of the, the cars going to oval, they go into figure eight. Sometimes they crash into it. I um I watch motorcycle races like that. In Europe, they have the most hardcore motorcycle races. I'm sitting in here in this room like this, like, Holy crud, it's hardcore. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> they, um, I watch a ton. It's because I have a lot of really off channels. And so I watch a ton of European motorcycle races. Because they really don't um, race motorcycles like that in America. Because we have laws here against stuff like that. <laughs> <clears throat> And the really fun figure eight races are the ones that they do. The old school buses. I'm 62, but I don't feel old. Absolutely. You're young. You are young, Dixie. You're still Gen X. <laughs> There's that. I, it's... We are like a help group right here. You are young. You are young. <laughs> it's that, um, that time when there were a lot of there were a lot of changes and so just a few years either direction makes you makes you have been able to have seen lots of different things or not do you know it's funny today walking out of my son's mma hey alibaba hey. yay alibaba and i are old we're from a different <laughs> era see dixie you got nothing on alibaba <laughs> <laughs> great to see you alibaba there was a kid walking out of my with my son, one of his friends from the MMA class, and they um, they were like, "Yeah, you've got Riz," and I'm sitting there, and, and I waited till we got halfway home, and I looked at him, and I'm like, "What's Riz?" <laughs> oh, you forgot what Riz is. I or I was about to say because you know I'm gonna ask you a question and not remember it, so tell me again. <laughs> 
tell me again. It made me feel so old when he said, I was like, oh, I'm 175. I am Lestat. I am Lestat because I have no idea what this kid is saying. So did or you- me, I'm almost 70. That's young. You know, it's so funny you would say that. Um, I was hanging out with Linda today. 70 is the new young because she's spry and she made more blankets. She's making me famous in the valley and downtown. I'm known as the blanket guy now. But like, you know, she's young and she's <laughs> this is me just equivocating to the stratosphere. But I hang out with someone who's um, almost like 73, 74. I've known her my entire life. She was shocked when she found out that I sew. Like, oh. she was so shocked. I'm in a quilting group with a bunch of gray haired young, young women. <laughs> but I sew while they quit, while they quilt. It helps me finish projects and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's more or less people just coming together and drinking coffee. Yeah, and, talking, and I get to hear everybody's business because I sit there quietly and I'm like, "Ooh, I didn't know that guy was messing up. I didn't know this person was doing well because they talk about everybody. <laughs> I used to go to a sewing class like that. I don't fun. get this. I don't get this new slang. If it doesn't even have anything, you can go off. Try to guess what it is. You know what, though? Like, um, I used to say Audi 5000 and my father, it hit a nerve. I didn't even know that he had, I would say Audi 5000. I would say yo a lot. It drove him mentally insane. <laughs> what else? Um, oh man, like my father hated 1989, 90 slang. He hated it. Or like when we say fresh and dope or, uh, oh, when bad was good. <laughs> that's bad every time you'd say that my dad would be like define that now define it right now oh <laughs> uh, i agree with you kilroy i don't either it is the new trendy word i have only heard of this week but he said you got riz and i was like uh-oh i'll be 50 this year you are young dose you are young <laughs> Heartache to heartache, we stand. Now I have Pat Benatar stuck in my head. <laughs> but I think also, though, like, I underestimated being raised by senior citizens. So I have this really long view of life because mm-hmm. I was raised by people who were towards the end of their life, you know? So I have a different view on age. If you yeah. think about it, if you think about it, uh, my father had a kid his last at my age now mm-hmm. my kid's 14 I couldn't imagine having a baby around right now <laughs> I would be like I'm gonna be 80 when you when you're 28 years old or whatever you know like <laughs> well my dad was my dad was 40 when my mom was pregnant with me. You know, um, I believe it was who was it Al Pacino or Robert De Niro just recently had a child. Oof, goodness. I think it was either it was either one or both. I watched this one Cheese Made channel and she lost it. I didn't like the Audi 5000. <laughs> and that was my era. That was like happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, absolutely. That was dope was the one I always get in trouble. <laughs> I would like, but that was the sign of the time. Like now when you said that I have that girl is dope. The Belle Biv DeVoe song stuck in my head. You know, it was just that era, you know, smooth out on an R&B tip. Oh, I can't remember. I had the poster. <laughs> I had the poster in my room and it was all one word smoothed out on an R&B tip with a hip hop appeal. Oh my gosh. I still remember it. (laughs) Man, those were the times, man. Daryl Strawberry wore a beret. I wore a beret because a baseball player wore a beret. When Daryl Strawberry got traded to the Dodgers, he would trot around L.A. with a beret. And I told my brother, I'm like, I want a beret. And he looked at me. He's like, really? And he bought me a Kangol. 
hat instead. But I thought it was a beret. <laughs> and I wore it unironically. I loved that stupid thing. Now I've got that vocal break stuck in my head. <laughs> Do you know, I think I saw a pattern for that. What is that hat called? Like the Kangol style? That like, because it comes from, it's like an old English style hat, but Kangol was the 80s run DMC, uh, you know, brand name was what they would wear. I can't remember. I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't know the name Kangol hat. You know what? I'm going to show you. Are you thinking of a, like a flat cap? Kangle hat. How can you? Okay. So I guess you would call it flat. Hold on. You know what? Is it a different world when I have my glasses and I can see things? <laughs> it is a completely different world. Okay. So can you see that? Oh, well, that's like a. If you say LL Cool J hat, I'm a see L, Samuel L. Jackson is famous for wearing the Kangol hats. Okay, well that one's different from the other one. From this one? Well, yeah, like that one's that one's different from like the gray one or the green one beside it. So they're I obsessively wore this style in the early nineties. Okay. Obsessively wore, but I had a black one because I'm obsessed with black and white. Oh, there's LL made the hat. He still he still wears them. <laughs> he still has that whole outfit, but he doesn't look as skinny. <laughs> None of us do. I'm not to be so fair. fond of the bucket hat look. Really? Unless you're, <laughs> Unless you're what? Fishing. <laughs> Don't make me get like I've made probably twenty or thirty bucket hats. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm gonna do a bucket hat stream now. I wish skit, skits. If you're still here, skits used to always type in bucket hats f the world. <laughs> Enjoying life is key. It's like it's a fleet. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I loved those hats coming up. Positive thoughts make everything better. I know I had one, man. I had one of those days. Tomorrow, I'm going to bunker down and protect my happiness and hide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a, a... Do they make mini Faraday cages? There's something I can put over my phone where I don't hear it ring or see it blink. <laughs> um. The, well, there's this thing called the off button. <laughs> the off switch, well, you know. <laughs> I'm on call, though. That's the problem. Aren't well, those called can... bucket caps? Yeah, they are. You can silence notifications from just certain apps. But then what would I have to whine about? <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I didn't realize. Sofeld, Sofeld would have nothing to whine about. I actually lost weight recently so much that a nurse was concerned about me and how my appetite was. I'm fine. I'm just not on a bucket of roids anymore. <laughs> okay. So um, every time I'm, I'm on pregnizone, I gain it depending on the time. Like if I'm on pregnizone for, uh, let's say, seven days, I will gain a legitimate, like, I'm not kidding you, 11 to 15 pounds. Oh my goodness. I eat and eat and I'm like, I want chili fries. And it's just, you know, last time I was on Pregnizone, I went to Tommy's and the only thing that didn't have chili on it was my soda. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I got, I, I shuddered because I don't eat like that on a normal day, but I was on a long steroid. I had a chili burger, a chili dog and chili fries. And did you leave the bathroom the next day? I I was eating it in the car because I had to drive to a different town to go get it because the good one isn't on my side of town. I enjoy the off switch often. I recently watched a YouTuber that said she gave me some life advice and didn't even know it. She's like, you know, 
I always, because she's a really big content creator, and she's like, you know, when I start getting delusional, I turn off YouTube. She's like, when I think people hate me, when I start, like, you know, getting snarky and bitter, I turn it off because it's an internal thing. And regardless of what you think people are doing to you, you do it to yourself. I did it to myself today. I'm not saying anything that didn't happen to me today. <laughs> That's why. You you oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Could try a, a lead cask. I like that. <laughs> Joy sent me a link today for um, someone that had one of those um, stripping feet. And they were doing some sewing with it. I didn't get to watch it yet because I saw it just before I came on here. But, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing a whole demo on that. Speaking of YouTube. Now, every time I hear stripper feet, I think of the movie Players Club. Uh, not doing well. Still touch and go, but not on roids anymore. Anyway, we're trying something else. I'm so hmm. sorry, Kilroy. I have amino issues that are regulated through um, drugs, and I wouldn't know what to do without it. Or get a lead, or get a lead pig. They they used to keep nuclear materials in a lead belly. Do you know what's really funny? Is I have a real 1950s bunker, actually two, at my job, and I guarantee you we probably have a lead belly buried somewhere. Does it have something in it? <laughs> To the point where we have to bore holes in the mountain because people were burying trash from the 50s and methane builds up. And rookies always think I'm lying when like, I tell them, do you see that canyon over there? You can't smoke cigarettes. And we send them up there in the tractor and there's a million size that says, hey, do you want to live? Don't smoke in this canyon. <laughs> it's real. It's methane builds up from, you know, don't bury your trash. Mm. <laughs> Even old landfills, they have pipes that lead to the surface because all the methane builds up and it has to be relieved, you know? Mm. That's where that gross smell comes from. What do other people think of me? It's none of my business, and I have to remind myself that sometimes. That is one of my favorite quotes. I put that on, I used to put that on my Twitter at least like once every two months. I love that quote. There's kind of a fine line because, well, I mean, there, there's... If you're like running around being obnoxious and offending everybody, then maybe you need to, you know, look at yourself and reevaluate. But there's <laughs> also, you know, not everyone is going to like you. Some people you're just going to rub them the wrong way. And there's there's not really anything that you can do about that. And that shouldn't that shouldn't, um, you know, affect you. You just kind of have to move on from that. kind of like it oh oh okay i you were doing something i wasn't sure what was this was a project i was trying to okay. make just a vest and i was obviously about five pounds skinnier well, it <laughs> makes I a tried good to make open it. topper hmm? i made this uh two years ago all right but look, it's it's uneven. Like I can tell just looking at it, it's uneven. Well, this okay. side is way uneven compared to this side. What about the what about at the neckline? Is one side higher than the other at the neckline? I was thinking about adding um, sides, like completely adding um, black trimming around this completely. There's um, so that, on, your, on your right shoulder, you could just adjust how that how the shoulder seam is set and then you could level out the bottom and it would be fine i think because the center part doesn't look too wonky and honestly a lot of it is just living rent free in my head because it was a miscut and i never do that this was my first miscut in years and i've made hundreds of coats shirts jackets this was my first miscut and i was like who are you were you abducted by aliens last night and I, and the funny thing is, I haven't made a miscut since this either. Oh, you've learned from your, learned from your reckless cutting then. So, you know, <laughs> it was worth it. I measured three times. <laughs> <and cut one. laughs> 
Oh, I restarted um, Enterprise, and I'm on the episode where, at, where they're at the space station right now. And you just restarted? You burned through like? No, I I start I restarted on on season two because I love oh. season two. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. And I see, think... oh, sorry. Go ahead. Mm. Just last night, I watched the episode with the miners and the the vents of gas and stuff. So fits with our conversation today. Because Kilroy said even on um, real landfills, they capture the gas and purify it and use it for power generation. Right now in my town, there is a million, multi-million dollar lawsuit because our local landfill got caught doing a bunch of janky stuff and there's a lot of oh. sick people around here oh that's not good and i and, and i'm like i'm i don't know let me ask you a question because i'm from here i've been sick my whole life i don't blame the landfill but like have you ever joined a class action lawsuit i haven't um just a, like a couple like the um um there was one for a steamer and there was one for um the battery that's a good question ali baba that's a good question so you have been in a class action but it's it's just one of those where they're just essentially going to send you five dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars or whatever the deal is like this one like each person's getting they're gonna they're trying to topple a lot of people don't know this but the sanitation companies make money hand oh they make multi they're multi 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 million dollar companies because they sort through the trash they recycle a lot of the stuff they in california and i and i was really um mad about this so i actually did research but they made recycling green glass not illegal, but you could no longer recycle it. You had to throw it in the trash. Well, two years later, all of these companies are getting record profits off of recycling because they're now recycling the green, gla the green glass. They're stealing from us. Like mm -hmm. in California, we have this thing called CRV where we mm -hmm. pay up front, assuming that you're going to recycle, mm -hmm. you know? So where's my money? <laughs> Lebowski, where's my money, Lebowski? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm still mad. I'm still mad about that. I bet what Renee is right for adjusting it. I, I like that. Measure three times and wrong every <laughs> time. That is the new house of sewing motto. Uh, sometimes that happens. Thank you. With how much you get from the class action uh, lawsuit, it's not worth filling out the forms. Absolutely. I, I got a couple hundred dollars on one. I didn't join to my knowledge, but Apple just sent me 92 out of the out of the blue a month ago. That means they royally messed up. It was that whole thing where they were slowing down the phone for battery management and people were complaining that they shouldn't be so heavy handed. And so they settled, I think, is what happened. They just because they didn't want to deal with and they said, fine, we'll send everybody money. We won't do that anymore. Sorry. It's not good enough. <laughs> not good enough. I get so mad when I hear that because I think of every time my phone stuttered and I needed it. But mine's always first world problems. It's not like I'm on the cliff, a cliff somewhere or something. You know, there's a reason why the mob is known for gar garbage companies. Millions and millions. And now they're getting sued. Now they're getting royally sued. I don't want to say I want to see the company, but it will dox my town. It's a major thing. It's probably uh, I'm surprised. Like I, I watched one of the stories on CNN. <laughs> oh, goodness. iPod. Yes. That's all right, Dix Dixie. Um, Waterman makes some very nice fountain pens, so I don't mind. <laughs> they should pay you. <laughs> they should pay you. Baby Lock should sponsor me, and Waterman should sponsor you. 
that that actually that youtuber i was talking about she was dropping wisdom she's like you know i have fifty thousand subscribers and when i hit 50k i thought i was gonna get all these sponsors and everything and then she like she had the cricket noises like i i really like this person because she's steeped in reality mm. uh-oh is our friend coming back is what Earlier in the stream, um, I had a cricket screaming at me. Oh, oh dear. My house is infested. And you know what's so funny? I have a bunch of new neighbors, and the pest control pest control guy went to one house and he came back. And I saw him the next day. He went to the other house and he came back. He's like going to all the new neighbors' houses. And like it's so funny. This entire neighborhood is infested with crickets. Welcome mm. to the neighborhood, guys. There's nothing you can do. They they were here first. <laughs> what is it that... Um, oh, hang on. Before I forget, um, Alibaba said earlier that Fiddly Bits has a video on the stripping foot. So in case anyone missed it, check it out. I love Fiddly Bits. She's delightful. And she has some really good videos on all the vintage attachments that you can get for your antique sewing machines. And I'm um, subscribed to her because of you guys. <laughs> so, um, back to crickets. What, what, um, what naturally eats crickets? Like, what predator do you have that's not keeping the cricket population down? We have we have lizards everywhere here, and they walk around with big smiles on their faces because they have an unreal food source. They're everywhere. Like, if I was to open my garage, it would sound like those commercials, those weird commercials, you know? It's it's, it's deafening loud. So that's how I know it's not just my house. It's the entire area. Mm. <clears throat> I think the crickets want some smoke. <laughs> Do you know what's really funny? I, I told the story earlier. I was sitting here um, hanging out, and a cricket fell from the ceiling. I, I looked at it, and I'm like, go to rehab, guy. <laughs> go oh. to rehab <laughs> but they're everywhere like they literally are falling from the ceiling they're in my door jam um they're everywhere and what they're doing in the door jam i don't know they if i leave my laundry out like because i'm in my garage in this room this is a giant room and i have all this weird organization thing next to my washer and dryer and if they go in under my clothes so when I pull my clothes out at the very bottom of my, I have several laundry baskets because I say, and I have our own and they meet all the laundry baskets, baskets meet in the garage. If they're in here for more than 24 hours, when I, when I'm putting everything in the washer and dryer, crickets are at the bottom of, of the clothes. My house is infested with crickets. <laughs> they're everywhere. I, to the point where, Somebody who used to live here walks in this house and they're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about the crickets. <laughs> cats, maybe. Do cats eat crickets, though? Because I'll I go get maybe it. <laughs> cats just like to catch them. Oh, well, no. Alibaba says they also like to eat them. Yeah, I'm with Kilroy. You need to call the damn exterminator. <laughs> Dixie. I'm mean, sorry, Joy says, ew. Yeah, they mm -hmm. they love my laundry. That's why I'm constantly doing laundry because I, they, I, it's gross. And you know what's so funny? Uh, my A good friend of mine coined the phrase, but I'm going to claim I invented it. He, Someone looked at me and said, man, I thought roaches were bad. At least roaches don't yell. <laughs> it's true. Roaches don't yell. Crickets are just as disgusting. They're just as nasty in there. My house is, it's, but like I said, I have, I take solace because it's not just my house. It's the entire neighborhood. When we, at night, um, because I do not sleep, I'll go stand in front of my house because it's so peaceful. It's so peaceful. But all you hear are, is the freeway and crickets. <laughs> and I want to listen to the freeway because the freeway is soothing. You need to call the damn exterminator. Mm -hmm. Crickets in their dryer is a sign. You have a oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Is is there one of those um, ultrasonic things that actually works with crickets? I haven't meant anything. Um, the only thing I that I have that works is my neighbors' cats were destroying my yard. 
and he actually ordered something. If you ever see that thing flicker on my videos, I have a light that flickers. It works. The cats, my, I have a, I have green grass. The cats destroyed my front yard. That flicker thing worked. So I'm not saying everything on Amazon is bunk because that worked. And it's been years and I still have it. It's solar powered and the cats stopped destroying my front yard. Hmm. Love to hunt. I need a, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have the emotional space for another animal though. Alibaba. <laughs> I get attached. It looks part bobcat. It has the same colors. Do you know, I really fell into a community on YouTube of people that own lynx. I think it's weird when people own wild animals, but they are wow. beautiful. Flipping drawers just got a, um, just got a, oh, now I can't remember the name. Oh, my word. Um, oh, yeah, a savannah cat. So they're like, they're, they're large and they have um, like leopard kind of pattern on their, on their fur. And um, they're like crossbred with some sort of wild cat, but they're like, a few generations down so that they're not they're not it's not like having a wild cat in your house but apparently growing, they're kind of like dog like hmm? what sorry growing up uh, we had a dog that was half wolf half timber shepherd everyone said oh. he was he was 190 pounds wow he was huge Sorry, I had I have to stay on this this is a comment for a second. Crickets in the dryer sounds like an euphemism for an STD. <laughs> you hear about him? He's got crickets in the dryer. I'm stealing that. I, I'm writing that down. My grass is very green where my dog be. <laughs> cats actually, if, if you want to get into it, cats actually are acidic when they go. They're extremely acidic. And so they destroy grass. I thought dog urine made grass go brown. Three bunny, three bunnies like to to come and eat off the oh, lawn. That must be adorable. You would love my job because hundreds of wild bunnies come and um, eat the grass at my job. Oh. When I turn the corner early in the morning, they scatter when I when I when I hit the lights. <laughs> it's funny. That's how I know if the water table has been high that year. If there's a lot of animals out there. Ah, okay. Like in drought season, you won't see a bunny. But when the water's high, there's animals everywhere. Yeah. There was a lynx that tried to come over and <laughs> over to be friendly. I didn't <laughs> think so. Heck no, you never trust that. My crickets oh. was chirping all night. Oh. My crickets was chirping all night. <laughs> I heard they got a shot for that nowadays. Oh, I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that. Oh, that's a good one. You hear about that guy? Yeah, he's got crickets in the dryer. <laughs> the wildlife officer I know that went through this that went through the sound with me said it was telling me it was coming over. We have um green and long. We have full body real life cougars here. Not your 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 single auntie. <laughs> we have <laughs> <laughs> real life big cats here if that mm. thing is walking over to me friendly i'm running and i know it's gonna catch me i don't care yeah we have oh mountain lions are scary they they might actually kill you they're my they're bigger than me i mm -hmm. a long time ago someone hit one on the road and i pulled over and called animal control and i sat with it the thing's bigger than me it was bigger than me mm. it's a real lion it's a real life lion you know mm -hmm. i have one wild bunny I, I, there's th there's thousands of them at my job and coyotes too it's the circle of life <laughs> and the bunny stayed out of the garden last year mm. we have scorpions so crickets are not bad Oh dear. Scorpion. Scorpions, um, a baby scorpion is lethal. Yeah. Ooh. There he goes. Come on, you want to sing, bro? Go ahead. Maybe if I'm nice to you, huh? Can you hear that? No. He's warming up. He's looking to see if anyone's in the room. I'm say he. I say he. Like I never mind. I'm not going down that street. Well, no, it is the males. They they 
screech their legs on their abdomen to make a sound and try and attack attract the lady crickets. You have brought so much class to the house of sewing. <laughs> I would like to thank you. See, kids, education works. It takes all the guessing out of life. It takes all the guessing out of life. Because Waterney knows. We're going to start a segment that says Waterney knows. Oh, dear. <laughs> that, what if I, like, give misinformation? Or... Oh, see, now you're overthinking it. We are all oh. misinformation if you really think about it. <laughs> Two coyotes used to need to meet me when I would come home. Man, coyotes, like, I have a love-hate with coyotes. I really had a hatred fight for coyotes until it was legal to shoot them. And I have the right to shoot a coyote, and I have it. Let's just put it that way. No, I couldn't <laughs> shoot one. But I also yeah. wouldn't want it, like, coming up to say hello because, you know, wild animal, unpredictable. They're emaciated dogs, though. They're always skinny. They're all they're emaciated dogs. Mostly all. Oh, we have ants here, too. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel sorry for the new people. Those just reminded me of something. We have ants, too. Like, but but let's be real. I live on the outskirts. Like, we are encroaching on these animals' um, territory after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's it going? I good. Yeah, the moment you see an ant in your house, you have to kill it and wipe wherever it was walking so that it doesn't bring back a whole bunch of friends. I have an exterminator and they use um, like an orange oil based one. So it's not so toxic for humans and that works pretty well, but it doesn't last like the chemical one, but it keeps them out of my kitchen. So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, they're there with their like sexy songs, doing the Elvis, calling their friends to make more crickets. It's no, I hear that the nineteen seventies bound chicka bound bound. It's it's you know what? In a real way, I tune. I completely was deaf to the crickets until I started my YouTube channel. Then one day I sat to make a video and I'm like, oh crap, my house is infested with you. Yeah, you need to you need to cut down the population. They can't but be running running through your house. That's terrible. I have a sewing machine that these small ants ate out all the natural glue. <sighs> We're starting wow. to get these really tiny microscopic ants. I have every bug spray known to man. I have this stuff that like you can't order in the state of California unless you have an industrial job. <laughs> there was a kid south of me that kept getting attacked by Cody coyotes while picking apples. Wow. He was even on the news. Coyotes are no joke. I see yeah. then I would then I would attack. I live on the outskirts of town. We're grooving, was groo <laughs> grooving, was grooving. Now I have that song stuck. That's when a smoke was a smoke, and grooving was groo. <laughs> I've been using Dr. Bonner's peppermint. Yeah, okay, that's a good way to do it. That's good to know. That's good to know. You know what though? Like I, I hate to be all um, Yosemite Sam with you. But I reached a certain point in my life where, like, if you can't beat them, just let them sing. They outnumber no. me. They no. outnumber me. No. I, and you, what I'm not telling you is that in the past, let's see, how old's my son? Uh, 14. Like, I had the house fully exterminated um, when he was four. The crickets were gone, I think, for a month. And then that one lone cricket came. He was like, I'm back. Well, you do have to keep keep up with it. And then you can get some repellent. And I just, I, have... I, I like, do you know how traumatic it is to tent a house? 
that's a whole thing. It's like moving. You're moving without moving. Man, I remember when that was huge back in the day. Like one by one, each one of my neighbor's houses were being tented. Man, that. Or I knew somebody. I can't believe. Back in the day, someone in this neighborhood made the um, newspapers because they set off over a hundred bug bombs in their house. That that's dumb. <laughs> I don't negotiate with terrorists. That's what I say when people ask me, like, how do you deal with teenagers? I say, oh, no, I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you got that. <laughs> I love that song. When grooving was grooving. Well, your sewing room isn't really inside your house, though, really. That is true. But um, that's one reason I can get kind of crazy in here, because it's actually illegal to smoke. If you have a minor in the house, but because this room and myself are detached from my house, I can. Uh, that's when a smoke was a smoke and groove. Now I have that song just on Front Street in my head. But keeping up with it means he can't so as much. It's traumatic getting your house. They're everywhere. And like, they're to the point where I recently went in the attic and crickets looked at me like, what are you doing here? Hello, hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. Oh, now I have that WB frog in my head. <laughs> Full tent may <laughs> burn it down. I was thinking about that. Do you know what's so funny? I was thinking about moving, tearing the house down, and just building a new one on top of it. It's the only way you can get rid of bugs. I was actually thinking about that yesterday. That's not going to solve your problem. <laughs> They're just going to come. I mean, they come inside through open doors and things. So you have to like keep repelling them outside. I think I'm going to have to um, get a, get a cricket patch or a cricket mascot. I and not like those, the cricket. <laughs> I have one of those plug in the wall things and it seems to work to keep them from coming inside. They seem to stay outside, but I don't know. The other day, I um, was putting away groceries. I walked in my house. Um, I handed a bunch of stuff to my son. I turned around. In the garage door jam, there was at least 15 crickets behind loose um, siding and stuff. Mm. Yeah, see, you need to get you need to get your house treated. And that was just like a peak. And I slammed the, I slammed the, the crown molding. It was loose crown molding and they jumped and it was more than 15. Mm. They mm -hmm. greet me in the hallway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stupid keyboard. That is my middle name. Cherry bomb. <laughs> oh, now I have that song stuck in cherry bomb. I have that song stuck in my head. There's nothing like, like, uh, Again, I hate to be Yosemite Sam. Get a Pac-Man toad. Those things love, they'll, they'll eat anything. I'm serious at this point. I had a lizard for a while and it got huge to the point where I told people, leave my lizard alone. Do not step on my lizard. But it got its fill and it left because it's like, man, you have a problem. And I'm <laughs> overweight. I'm overweight and you have a problem, sir. Yeah. You the cricket went bowl. on a weight loss. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Have your whole house treated. Some orange oil bug spray. Joy says suck them up with the shop vac. Need to do like a thorough cricket cleaning. Then put down some diatomaceous earth. The other night when I was recording, it was so bad. I like, oh man, my neighbors, because we all have cameras. I bet I looked crazy. I opened my garage and I unloaded with spray near my toolboxes. I would, I literally had two, I had a can in each hand mm. and I stood there and the cricket was like, ha ha. And it kept chirping. <laughs> then I closed the door and I sat here for a minute and it kept chirping. And then I sprayed up in the, um, up in the rafters where all my uh because i have just rows of sewing machine boxes i know that's shocking from plastic to to wood and i sprayed up there and it got quiet because it was in the ceiling mm. see you can use your your um pressure blower blow all out up there get the everything all cleared out 
You can do it. We have plans for you. <laughs> and then the ants will move in. If it's if it's not one, it's always the other. We live, we, you know what's so funny? As human beings, we think we own the earth. It's more of a symbiotic relationship, whether you want to admit it or not. Like we have to live with these things. Mm -hmm. I kind of had that, like I, I was looking at the legality of what I could do with raccoons, but then I had to have a talk with myself. Like, hey, they live here too. For as much as I absolutely hate the raccoon in my neighborhood, it, I'm not trying to be, a, you know, I'm a Californian, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. We hug trees here, <laughs> but you know, well. I mean, you have to live with the crickets and the raccoon and whatnot, but that doesn't mean you have to live with them in your house. Do you guys see fireflies anymore? That's such a good question. Have you ever seen fireflies? No. I don't think I've ever in my life ever seen fireflies that weren't on TV or in a cartoon acting wasted. <laughs> no, I'm trying to I don't, think. I don't think we get them here. It would be spectacular. It, you know, it's kind of like when Californians see snow, we put on all of our warm our warm weather stuff and go and have the time of our lives. <laughs> I would probably run in the middle of them, you know, or try to. You know, what's really funny. When I was a kid, no, I mean, I know. I, I don't know. That's, that's a really good question, Dose. I don't think I've seen fireflies in a very long time. I get them in droves outside because of my sunflowers attracting them, but I haven't had them inside the... Yes. So Dixie says yes. Do you know what's funny? Um, I get a lot of bees because I have a sunflower patch in front of my house and in my backyard. I obsessively eat sunflower. I make my own sunflower seeds, but I put Lowry's on mine. It's not even like a state secret. <laughs> I just put a bunch of Lowry and pumpkin seeds too. Just a bunch of Lowry's and put them in the oven. 350, you come back with their hot and it's the greatest thing ever. There you oh, go. Oh no. Now I'm Only craving same. pumpkin. Sorry. No, we're saying the same thing. I live outside the city limits. I'm thinking about moving outside the city limits because I want to start growing pumpkins now. <laughs> and somebody sent me a picture of somebody with the literal great pumpkin. Good grief. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They were they were like 2,200 pounds, these pumpkins. They were they were massive. You could like build a little house in one. In my yard every year. That one's huge. You know, when I was a kid, we used to go to um, state fairs. And you'd see stuff like that every year. You really don't see, like, the 20-pound squash. Or, like, you really don't see that anymore. We used to catch them as a kid and pull off their glow and put it on the ears. Like, earrings. I'm probably going to Firefly Hill. <laughs> That's awful. I didn't even know you could do that. See, I've never been around fireflies like that. Poor fireflies. We I are. hope you wouldn't do that now that you're grown and know better, Dose. But keep in mind, we're we're Care Bears, you know. You're showing your Care Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Circle of life. <laughs> well, I'm obsessed. Do. With roasted pumpkin seeds, Dixie. I grew up very, like, very old school. Sorry. No, just we all we all do things when we're kids and we don't know better. So I hope you know better now. Yeah, I wore, I wore one leg up like LL Cool J because I saw it in a video. <laughs> For years. No years. Goodness. I would tie I would tie a scarf around it like LL oh, did on my jeans and everything for years. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing my age. <laughs> I grow tiny pumpkins. I wish I could, but the raccoons around here would pull them right when they got edible. <laughs> I probably couldn't catch one now. I got well, bees knees. <laughs> you just have to grow enough pumpkins so that there's some for the raccoon and some for you. 
although I recognize it's right to live, in no way, shape, or form am I a fan. In no way, shape, or form am I a fan. <laughs> this is true. They do come with a bazillion seeds. So Okay. Okay. So true confession time. Uh, this happens to me every year. It's going to happen to me this year. I'm going to put it live. I'm going to put it on YouTube. I um, have grapevines in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And I grow wine grapes, Concord grapes, all green, um, mm -hmm. burgundy, all different types of grapes. At the end of the season, I have thousands and thousands and thousands of grapes. To the point where people this time of year at my job are telling me like, hey, um, I'm still eating those grapes you gave me last year. You could get a, um, a dryer and make raisins and then hand out the raisins to people. Because then they last longer. And maybe you can donate them. I don't know if there's like a special treatment you would have to do to wash them before you're allowed to give them away but I, if i did it on halloween they would never come i have a um i have a whole <laughs> freeze dryer thing they wouldn't even know i could make my own package and everything i have a um plastic sealer and everything oh no goodness. one would ever come by my house ever again if i gave out raisins on halloween i would be that guy not halloween i was thinking that you could give out you know a blanket and a bag of raisins to people in need. People in need. The, the next year, they would be like running from me. They'd be like, oh, no. It's <laughs> me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Could get a wine press. I know people that make wine. I, I do not. I quit drinking a long time ago. But I actually know people that, um, that make wine. They'd probably take it. Concord Graves is the... Jordan of fruit. I, you know, what's so funny. Uh, my son, like he, I tell him like, you have no idea how spoiled you are. Cause during the right time of year, we go in the backyard and just pick them off the vine and eat them. Mm. They're so good. And I know somebody thought I was crazy for saying this, but I love sour grapes. It's nature's natural sour candy. The green man, when the grapes are green, they taste like lemon heads. They they are so sour. They taste it's natural sour candy. They're you so know I'm sour. obsessed. See, now I gotta get those cookies. You know I'm obsessed with sour candy. And um, they're my favorite as well. And when they're like right before they turn, they get green and they are they're it'll make your eye, they'll make you cry. They're so sour. Nah, I like sweet fruit. It's natural, though. It's not like there's, you know, because I'm a sugar aholic, you know, and so it's something that's natural. Yeah, I just I like I like my fruit like so ripe that it's just about to like say no, nope, we're done. I, like I wish we got, I wish we got fireflies here. I want to learn how to make wine like I love Lucy. Oh, nightmare baby, are you time traveling? Are you time traveling? Come join us in the future. I think you're time traveling. I um now I have the circle of life stuck in my head. <laughs> I know. Do you, you know what? I think it's a West Coast thing. Um, I time traveled back from that. <laughs> exactly. But I think it's a West Coast thing because I lived in the Pacific Northwest and I never saw fireflies. And I went wandering in the forest during the summer <laughs> and winter. <laughs> and I mean, like wandering by myself in the forest. Especially in um, Seattle is rainforest conditions. Mm. And Oregon is like just scary woods. <laughs> <laughs> With bears. Real For real. I found one. Ooh. I'll tell that story one day when I get a Patreon. And I could, and I could explain it in, in detail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. I have some... Um... I have some insomnia issues, so I have some uh, uh, some sleeping tea, and they have a new one that's a hot chocolate. It's so indulgent, and I'm like, oh, I'm being virtuous. I'm taking my sleep medicine right before I go to bed. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I have those weird cotton candy frosting cookies. Oh. How did 
like, oh, goodness. You need to throw those out. What are you doing? Thought you wanted to fight aging. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's gone. He's gone for the cotton candy frosted cookies. Oh, so bad for you. They probably taste amazing to him, but, you know, so bad. Let's see. I Fire. Have... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was reading comments while you were gone. Oh, Dose suggests cotton candy grapes. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I um, actually eat extremely healthy. And then I splurge every October. Last year, I didn't stop. But I still eat apples and oranges. This, but look, look, they're cotton candy. And they even smell. They even have that cotton candy smell to it. I'm not a big frosting person. I have never have been. Even as a little kid, I always liked the cake better than the frosting. So I can't get on board with those cookies. But I'm sure somebody is sitting there saying, ooh, those look amazing. Alibaba says, fireflies like my willow bushes and the pine trees. Huh, that must be pretty to see the little lights sparkling in the trees. <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah but I want to wake up the next day feeling better not feeling worse <laughs> clearly with some life advice drink a bottle of vodka you'll go to sleep somewhere between the top and bottom of the bottle there is a disclaimer in the beginning of this stream I want everyone to remember that thank you for flying my so called life airlines Gilroy works here <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so cotton candy grapes are real? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a kind of a kind of grape. I like the red flame grapes; those are good. And I, you know what? I, I'm just gonna admit it. I like seedless grapes. I hate chomping down on a bitter seed, fighting with spitting the seeds out. I just want to eat my grapes. So, and when you drink your tea, do you put your pinky up like this? <laughs> for balance <laughs> truth be told I was kind of shocked when these actually tasted like cotton candy I'm sorry you broke up what What was that about Something I said truth be told I was kind of shocked that these actually taste like cotton candy well I don't know why they wouldn't cotton candy is just spun sugar so that's also my nickname is Spun Sugar. Spun Sugar? <laughs> oh, that can be your DJ name. DJ Dose and Spun Sugar. Yeah, but it sends the wrong impression to the wrong circles. You got to find a different word than Spun. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I must not be in that circle. <laughs> That's because you're classy. That's why you're here. You're classing this place up. You have no idea. You have no idea. Uh, see, Dixie and I can get a cake together. I'll eat the cake, and Dixie can eat the frosting. <laughs> I'm like this. I'm like Dixie. I like the frosting more than the cake. I, I've never grown out of that. I thought I would one day. They taste like cotton candy too. It's not a gimmick. They're so good. You know, I blame my son because he got this weird cotton candy tub, and and I got the taste. It's that is just like. <laughs> air sugar <laughs> they got some that looks like eggplant interesting Ooh. you know I grow food because my parents did when I was younger my parents grew um, eggplants cucumbers um, all kinds of carrots man they grew every kind of like spice you could think of so that's why I'm, I'm such a um, green acres kind of person my brother got some some grapes. He said that they they were Japanese and that that they, they were the size of a plum. Oh, wow. no, that sounds good. That sounds good. See, I could deal with seeds in those because you know, enough fruit. But but that reminds me. Um, I'm gonna see if you know how they have those square boxes for um for apples. 
I'm sorry. They have what for apples? Square boxes, like in Japan, I think oh, they make square uh -huh. apples. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna try to make square lemons because I have we have lemon trees. Okay, have you been <laughs> so playing I'm, too much Minecraft? I've been watching too much YouTube. I watch those <laughs> videos of Japanese farmers or wherever they are, and it and like and like I like some of their techniques. So I like, of course, because I do some of the things they do. So I watch these people. But I got all into this video the other night and I brought it up today and somebody was like, you know, we can actually do that because we were on Google and we <laughs> found it. I still have the circle of life stuck in my head. It makes me think of that um, that video where the the Lion King tour and the Aladdin tour happen oh. to meet up at the airport at the same time. <laughs> Cotton candy grapes are awesome. I guess I've only had like the red, purple, and green ones. I feel so uncultured at this point, but I'm a pirate. <laughs> Homegrown is so better. I like the taste better. They're called witch fingers. Huh. Hmm. I've never heard of witch finger grapes. Square apples, uzu, pineapple, and watermelon. Yeah, I've seen. That's pretty, I mean, they cost a small fortune. I'm not sure why, but they're interesting to see. You kind of want to have one just because they're unique. It's the process. And like all of that you can do, they just build a square box out of wood with the, with the watermelons. It's just a square box. Excuse me. With the apples, it's a plastic box. Mm. And it just grows inside the box. That's what we're going to try to do with the lemons. Okay. But this is just a bunch of people in a group with that's on Amazon and Google. They're like, let's do this. Let's do this. So we'll see six months from now if I have square lemons or if I'm just making. Someone I know has a very fruitful lemon tree. And they're the, every year I make, man, I've made lemonade, everything you could possibly think of. And people are kind of sick of their lemons, too. <laughs> I have a fruitful lemon tree. And I also have a couple neighbors who seem to think that my lemons are their lemons. And I don't mind sharing my lemons. But when I come to the tree to get a lemon and someone has come and cleaned out the whole thing, I get a little annoyed. See, this is why you need me to come over. I'll come over. Eddie Murphy's down and be like, hey, <laughs> who's eating lemons? First off, you'll hear crickets because no one will admit to it. And then the <laughs> next time you walk out, the ground will be yellow with lemons. <laughs> I need one of those um, those sprinkler heads. And when it's it's with the motion detector, see someone approaching the tree. <laughs> That's what you need. You need to put a ring on the tree so you can talk to people. <laughs> like, are you making proper life choices? I wouldn't even like... I wouldn't even um, like when people were um, coming around the ranch looking for stuff to steal. We have all calls and I could talk to them from my house and I would be like, hey, man, where in your life did you make a wrong turn? Do you know it worked almost every time when I said that? <laughs> almost every single time I'd guilt people. I didn't even have to get crazy. I'd just be like, bro, where did you turn? I'd, or I'd tell people like you need a job and then they would leave. <laughs> <laughs> which fingers funny fingers are grown exclusively in san joaquin valley uh -huh. i know that word <laughs> <laughs> i did not know that do you know they grow so much in central california it's not even funny um anything that you get from hardy's as far as a vegetable um comes from manteca california if you eat anything from carl's Jr. or texas also texas has large swatches of ranch land but most stuff that they get is from the west coast from manteca california they they own a swash of land that's the equivalent of like four or five counties and um budweiser has a bunch of plants in stockton california and i know this because i lived there <laughs> is that where they grow their mega horses they are there and 
on a really terrible segue, they have quite a few slaughterhouses there, too. Hmm. Quite a few. I worked at one. That's what I found out a lot about myself. <laughs> oh, Nightmare Baby is still time traveling. Come, come ahead with us. We're talking about growing produce in the San Joaquin Valley. Have you ever been to Gilroy, California? Um, I, I've been through there, but I don't think I've ever like it's stopped. The garlic capital mm -hmm. they say of the world but we claim everything in california is of the world <laughs> but you can smell it that smell reminds me there's a a really janky way where you can cut through gilroy to go to san francisco because if you're coming from from this direction you have to go north and then you head west but if you cut through gilroy it takes you like you're heading northwest basically Okay. But you could smell that place miles away. I would love to go to a garlic festival. Gilroy is famous. I remember the first time I drove through there, I, I closed all the vents and everything. You could taste it. <laughs> Your house is the sewing capital of the world. Thank you. I will take that. <laughs> So, what's everybody's favorite cake? Um, red velvet. And I, I was obsessed with red velvet with cream cheese um, frosting. All but right. then I I played it out because I ate I ate that for years. Mm. I'm obsessed with red velvet cake. What's yours? Or see, you, I'm sorry, you're you're speaking to a cake expert. Mm -hmm. Or I'm obsessed with um, our local Safeway slash Vons sells um, Carvel cakes with the cookie. It's the ice cream cakes with the cookie at the bottom. It has that weird like cookie crumble mix at the bottom. It is the greatest thing on planet Earth as far as cake go, as far as ice cream cakes go. I don't really think of ice cream cake as a cake, though. I think of it as just a convenient way to serve ice cream at a party. <laughs> Um, hands on hips, excuse me, it's an art form. I've actually made ice cream cakes. <laughs> well, I'm not you saying make the that cake. it's not, a, you know. Well, okay, yeah, I guess it does have cake, and then you cope, and then you melt it, it with the ice cream. And, yeah, and then you have to put right. it back in the fridge, so yeah. everything solidifies. It's a process. This is true. This is true. Let's see. I like my one bowl chocolate cake recipe. Ooh, post that on your page. I would Boston like cream pie. Oh, see, I can't eat ice cream anymore, and I was obsessed with ice cream. Mm. I was obsessed. Boston cream pie ice cream was amazing. Have you tried um some lactase? My friend, gets you're trying it. to, you're trying to, you're trying to civilize what? me so much, and I appreciate you. I'm just trying but to help no. you out since you said you missed ice cream. I do, I do, man. Like, and I tested it out the other day. I still can't breathe when I eat it. Oh no! See, lactase. Try it out. Maybe that'll help. And I live by the one McDonald's where the ice cream machine is never broken. I live by the one McDonald's where like, <laughs> I went through a hardcore soft serve issue. Like I had issue. I'd go through the drive through eat one, and then I'd walk in there and buy another one. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I was bad. I was obsessed with those things. I like my one bowl chocolate cake recipe. Yeah, post the recipe. I'd like to try that. Okay, so cheesecake. What's. Are What's you gatekeeping like... cake? Are you gatekeeping? No, I'm cake? asking. I'm asking. Is cheesecake cake or a pie? I would say it's a pie. It's glorious. It's What's... glorious, is what it is. You know, I told you, I've been to Wisconsin. I've had stinky cheesecake. I've had Gouda cheesecake. Like cheesecake mm -hmm. is amazing. Okay, Man, but do you think I've of missed. it as a cake or a pie or a tort? Have we reached the okay? We have reached the food fight portion of the stream. I think everybody <laughs> is a taco. What is it? Is a taco a sandwich? Are we here again? Are we on? Are we going down this street again? I think, I think cheesecake. cheesecake is a pie. I cheesecake. say it's naughty. It's so good, Joy. I'm obsessed with cheesecake. 
or better, a confection. Ooh. Yeah, I think cheesecake is a tort. I would call it a tort. You know, you youngins and your need to classify everything. <laughs> It's amazing. It's glorious, is what it is. Now I'm craving <laughs> cheesecake. I'll man, I'll eat the store bought stuff, the bougie stuff. I am not a snob. Like I'll eat any kind of cheesecake. Now I'm craving. Cheesecake. Alibaba says it depends on the cheesecake. I told you I've had some really stinky Wisconsin stuff, and I didn't think I'd like it, and I loved it. Yeah. Oh my does every yeah i agree i agree with that dixie a cake has flour if there's no flour in it it makes a different a different thing and then alibaba says oh this is true eat really some cheesecake could even be considered a bar mm -hmm. yeah i would agree so um, it has cake it has cake in the name <laughs> Thank so, you, thank you. <laughs> sticky toffee pudding. I would say that's a put. That's called a pudding, but I would call it cake, especially since you don't really seem to boil it like you would boil a a pudding. Um, does everyone like that? What do, what do you consider? It. What's a hot dog considered? A sandwich? <laughs> a taco? A hot dog's a taco. Technically, it's a taco. If you really think about it, you want to. But you is a go taco down a street? kind of sandwich? I think I think you were here that one night. We talked about this for 45 minutes and I left frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> frutata, if you want to get you want to get fancy, a frutata is just uh scrambled eggs. It's an egg pie. Yeah. Do you know how disappointed it's a I was when I quiche. Do you know how disappointed I was? Like I knew some really bougie people and they'd always say, Oh, you've never had frutata. I was served it and I was like, these are eggs. <laughs> This is egg pie. Is this like, is it like you're bougie? This is ridiculous. <laughs> butter tarts are my favorite. No, no. Ooh, I don't. I've never had a butter tart. It's a butter you know tart, kind of like a pecan pie with no pecans. Hmm? Oh, now I'm craving pie. I've been buying. You know what's been doing me in? I've been buying um those Pillbo Pillsbury Doughboy um crescent rolls oh. and i cook them and then isaiah and i were like okay one for you one for me one for you one for me want to take it up a notch oh. you roll it put some chocolate chips in it and then roll it up and bake it i'm weird i the certain things i like to keep church and state separate oh oh okay i'm i think it's because i'm addicted to butter i think i just like putting butter on bread mm. A taco is a wrap. Uh oh. <laughs> For the record, I didn't even hear rap and the word rap considered with food up until like 2009, 10, around there. Inedible. <laughs> Egg pie sounds like a really dumpy rapper. <laughs> My new name is Egg Pie. <laughs> With raisins. Oh, Joy. Joy likes uh, Pillsbury. I'm a purist. That's why I made like a pecan pie. A pecan what? tort without pecan. I'm wondering if she's, if Joy is saying that the raisins go in the butter tart or if the, ra or if Joy is talking about raisins in the in the crescent rolls. I like the Pillsbury pre pre made sugar cookies, but usually I can't help myself and I will end up eating the whole package right out of the fridge. That's real. That's real. I think that's another thing. I've been addicted to sugar cookies my whole life. Like it's not like I just started eating these frosting cookies. Like there's people that have known me. They're like, bro. Have like like serious? They're like concerned for me. They're like, you need to go get checked to see if you have the beaties. Mm. Well, you should do that anyway. But I've got this feeling. <laughs> this town is holding me down. Uh, you can't see it, but I'm Kevin Bacon flipping right now. Uh huh. 
off a giant beam. I'm punching my my bug. <laughs> it's got me punching my car. <laughs> Pecan pie on the caro syrup bottle is the best dessert ever. Hmm. I don't think I've ever had caro syrup in my house to try the recipe. One of the reasons why I've been making um, the Pillsbury, Pillsbury thing is because a while ago, Isaiah we read the story and he I, he slipped it in the net man he was craving sausage so he bought a package of like 45 links oh my goodness so i was like i'm gonna make gravy so i made biscuits and gravy Ooh. and i've been cra and ever since i went off and made a bunch of biscuits and gravy i've been craving it every day since but you can't eat like that every day you cannot eat like that every day and i mean buttermilk no. I was making homemade buttermilk biscuits with mm -hmm. homemade gravy with with um, cooked sausage in the gravy. Mm. Now I'm craving my own cooking. <laughs> <laughs> not chocolate does not belong in pecan pie. <laughs> I hate baking and cooking. I enjoy doing it for pleasure, but I don't enjoy it so much when it's a necessity. <laughs> now 45 links sounds like a good rapper. <laughs> that is my new rapper name is 45 links. <laughs> they were good too. They were so good. They, oh. Shout out to my ex-girlfriend who civilized me and taught me how to cook. <laughs> certain things she was a bit more from the south so she taught me how to cook the good stuff like biscuits and gravy yeah for real it's more fun to cook with somebody or but sometimes i'll get inspired i remember i was watching martha stewart late at night and she made these like checkerboard shortbread cookies and i'm like i'm gonna try those it was three in the morning i don't know why i had to try them right then but <laughs> they were good I passed my cooking class in school and failed the sewing. Uh -huh. Wow. How things have Your changed. Story. I never finished home ec because the football coach walked in the room and um, took every young man who was over 5'5". Five five. Hmm. So I never finished home ec. Hmm. See, I tried to take shop in high school and they wouldn't let me. I wanted to take shop instead of sewing because I already knew how to sew the basics. I wanted to, to take home, home ec because I would have got an A in that class with the sew. I knew how to sew and cook at that age. Was that when you knew how to cook an egg? <laughs> you were on your own? <laughs> that was like nine. I was like seven. Like I was a kid. My mom gave up early. <laughs> but keep in mind, I was the I'm the youngest of nine. So she was way done. I I make my son cook and I'm like, you know what's so funny? I'm probably the same age now though. Cause she's a little bit younger than my father than she yeah. that she was. I love growing. Oh, I love gardening and cooking. I love gardening. Do you know the only thing um, my son, he looked at me one day, he's like, you know, I can, I see a trend. I'm weird. I love, I'm, I'm really sanitary. I'm big about cleaning everything. I hate folding laundry. Mm. I hate folding. Like, I, man, my couch, and I tell my son, like, the couch is not allowed to be your closet. And he's like, you gonna help me fold? I was like, these are life skills, kid. Life skills. <laughs> well, I do everything else. Like I literally because I'm I'm a bad boss, I do everything else. Yeah. You know, like I make him take out the trash. He has chores, but I'm a bad boss. Be like I'm scrubbing the floor, like, you know, he learns by example, but I'm I'm a sanitary kind of person, you know. Mm -hmm. Does he know how to scrub a floor properly? 
Of course he does, because one of my biggest pet peeve in today's world is when a kid gets a service job and doesn't know how to sweep a floor. Mm-hmm. Or doesn't even know hand placement. But of course, like, ugh, I'm in that weird because I was watching something. This, I was watching this YouTuber and they're like, yeah, I am. I'm 29 years old. I was like, unsubscribe. <laughs> You didn't I'm in that watch weird a YouTuber who was 29. What? No, my whole point is I'm in that weird cusp of my age of where like I remember my youth, but I'm not young. <laughs> but I have 20 year old thoughts in a 40 something year old body, you know. I don't I like digging in the dirt. Yeah. I have the claw. See, I have the claw water in it, and I have two. So you wouldn't even have to dig. You just have to put it in the ground and stand on it and turn it. It's still dirty. You got to get your hands in there. How do you? You'd be terrible at farming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you. I have no interest in digging in the dirt. <laughs> Laugh out loud, I never fold laundry. It's just, it's a weird pet peeve of mine. I don't, I think it's because, like, I do a lot of wardrobe changes. My son is the same way. I live in a laundromat. Like, even when this stream is over, I'm going to do more laundry. Me too. So, Alibaba, do you just, like, hang your stuff up? That is an option. I have the claw. The claw is awesome. I have the claw from someone else. I borrowed it, and then I kept trying to return it, and I wasn't able to coordinate. So I still have their claw, like twenty years later. Oh, it's yours. If you, when you <laughs> say twenty years, their claw. No, you are officially the owner. You've had it longer than they had ever had it. Nine possession is nine tenths of the law, you know. Nice aerator later in the grow. Oh, for with using the claw to like aerate around the soil for their stuff. I literally use it every year. I'm probably gonna use it tomorrow because I got plans on going in my backyard if I'm all right. Well, if you like extra aerating and yard clawing i'll send you my address you can come and claw to your heart's content <laughs> plant things in the dirt see i enjoy a nice garden i just don't want to do the gardening so that'd be great got a plan <laughs> i like the garden i just don't like gardening i had yeah. to process that it took my brain a minute to process that i'm a I'm a grower. Like, I love growing food. Fighting the raccoons every year. Like, I love that. And the first year that I grew a 10-foot plant, um, I thought, I man, you could hear the Green Acres song. <laughs> See, we're going to have a meetup at my house. Alibaba's going to come. They're going to bring a couple claws, too. It'll be great. I'll, be, I'll have tall plants. So tall. And I won't have to do any gardening. That's just, um, that's not a party. That's servitude. <laughs> run! run! I thought you said you liked gardening and you enjoyed using the claw. So that's like when your friend comes over and, and they're like, oh, we're having a pizza party and there's boxes everywhere. And you're like, wait a minute, you're moving. Wait a minute. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Uh uh. I smell, I can smell that a mile away. See, I'm straightforward though. I'm telling you up front. In the invitation, you want to use your garden claw, I've got just the spot for you to do it. That year was the first time I ever grew. That plant got so high, I got paranoid and chopped it because you could see it from the front of my house. <laughs> that was the first year I ever grew, ever. And that was so uh, oh plentiful. That was the 10-foot plant oh plentiful. <laughs> I love growing my food too. I love my absolutely Dixie. See, Dixie and I are going to survive. Okay, <laughs> Dixie, you can come too. Dixie can do the planting. I'll oh my lemonade. god! I've got a lovely tree. 
That reminds me. I have a few, probably like a man. There's probably 60 or 70 potatoes in the ground waiting to be picked right now. Wow. You're going to feast. I sent pictures to people people last year when I made mashed potatoes. I was like, look, this came from my garden. (laughs) I was annoying with it. I showed the full step and everything. I was so excited when I made my own uh, mashed potatoes from my backyard. And they they were potatoes. <laughs> I grew some broccoli and I posted on my Instagram and I'm like, look, my broccoli harvest. The plant, you know, the plants were like a couple feet tall. They were nice. And then they grew like literally up. It was like Jack and the Beanstalk. They were th- like the stalks were thick around like this they got to be 12 feet tall yeah it was amazing i was about to say they grow cauliflower and um, broccoli around here that's huge they get huge i was shocked what's up buff guy So, I mean, Dixie says, I love growing my food, too. I love my hands in the dirt. So, you know, joking aside, I don't like to dig in the dirt. There is, you know, like homegrown vegetables. They taste so much better. And fruit, like fresh from the tree. It's amazing. Oh, that, that's why I'm addicted to um, lemonade from What's Your Name's Tree. I've been making it for years. And when I bought store-bought lemonades, lemon lemons they tasted different yeah inferior they were just smaller you know i saw a guy that made a uh stack uh they made a stack for potatoes it was a large and round bale of straw rotted 10 years center out and filled with dirt i have so many potatoes i didn't know i didn't realize that when i planted them that they were going to come back every year and they come back in mass if you don't um if you don't um harvest them all then they grow new plants over and over and over (laughs) you can buy one potato from the store and you know cut the eyes or whatever and grow them and you'll have potatoes for life just do what my son and i did we forgot about it in the cabinet and he was like they're growing i was like let me show you something and i I will (laughs) never i will never forget that day because we stood there in awe and the here it is all these years later and we are potato farmers i was gonna grow sweet potatoes And then I saw a video and I found out that you have to store them for like six months or something like that and let them, let the syrups do their thing. The sugars in the, in the potatoes do their thing and you can't, you can't eat them right away. And I'm like, wait, what? You can't? You know, it's so funny. Um, I'm addicted to sweet potato pie, but if you gave me a sweet potato and just gave it to me i would think it's the most disgusting thing on earth that's so weird to me my mom she still gives me a hard time and she's like how can you not like a sweet potato but like sweet potato pie and i'm like i'm just built different (laughs) i'm obsessed with sweet potato pie so weird i haven't grown potatoes yet i tried uh i've tried burnt unsick of unsuccessfully of successfully i have potatoes with eyes that have grown over one foot already oh wow i'm trying to get get... that like oh sorry go ahead oh i was just gonna tell alibaba we'll see if if he gets 460 pounds like his friend did that's what i'm saying like i want that one big well i don't want a ridiculous one I just want to grow like a decent baked potato. Like I, you, you don't see those really big ones in the store anymore. And when you do, it's only a certain time of year and they're really expensive. Well, get one of those when you see it and propagate. 
throw it in the back of the cabinet forget about it <laughs> let it turn into a tree plant it and in now, your yard. Oh. Hmm? no go ahead no i was done that was, that was it i do now i'm craving stinking potatoes <laughs> Ooh. I unsee I grew um the what are those those red potatoes for a while, but they weren't as successful. Mm. But now I'm craving red potatoes. It was the weirdest thing to me to wash something up and be able to fry it and eat it. It was the weirdest thing to me, still to this day. Yeah. J just takes the most zempic, <laughs> then you can eat anything. <laughs> So if you grow sweet potatoes and you don't cure them, like, is that what's wrong with, do they not taste good at all? Or they are they just not as good as if you let them cure? Does anyone know? Are there any sweet potato experts in the chat? A yam is a yam. <laughs> is a yam. It's gross. <laughs> Like I said, well, I, I'll say that, but I will destroy a sweet potato pie. And again, okay. I'm not a snob. I'll eat homemade and even, I even like the Patty LaBelle. Is it Patty LaBelle? I, I ate one live on stream and I was like, wow, I was so surprised how good it was. I haven't tried it. I tried a different, I don't know, sweet potato pie from somewhere and it was okay, but not to not to start a food fight, but I prefer pumpkin pie over sweet potato pie. I said it. Sorry. You're gonna get both of our cards snatched. <laughs> nah. I, you know what? I, I wouldn't. I would not kick pumpkin pie out of bed for um, leaving crumbs. Yeah, I mean, sweet potato pie is all right, but to me, sweet potato is a side dish. Pumpkin pie is dessert. Wow, okay, that's fine. Those are fine. <laughs> Again, I grew up, even though I grew up in California, I grew up around people that ate food that was more traditionally Southern. So I'll fry anything. I <laughs> I'm I I prefer sweet potato pie. Just like potatoes, they they go sweet then rotten. That's so true. Like a banana. You know what? I eat a lot of bananas. I just don't brag about it, but I love bananas. That's two votes for pumpkin pie. Blah. One vote against from Blah. Mr. Sewing. You can't plant cherry tomatoes and expect <laughs> mistake. <laughs> Genetics true. matter. See, I know so many people on the opposite, but I really don't have a preference between the two. <laughs> Hello, Rashawn. How's it going, Rashawn? I'm a dig I grew uh, I'm biased. Like I'm biased towards sweet potato pie. But again, I will not kick a pumpkin pie out of bed. <laughs> Every year with my with my family, we have this discussion because there's people who bring um sweet potato pies then there's people who bring pumpkin pies and it becomes this really passive aggressive fight let's be real i'm here for the whipped cream i am here for the whipped cream <laughs> yeah that we don't need to fight about it it's a feast just enjoy what people bring is that why you divorced she was eating <laughs> crackers in the bed and you got sick of the crumb met <laughs> in a metaphor way yes <laughs> My ex-boyfriend used to, if he saw someone he thought was attractive, he'd say, I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers. <laughs> That's where I got it from. My brother would obsessively say that. <laughs> <laughs> I smoke my favorite crop. <laughs> oh, you and, you and William will get along great. <laughs> Like I said, that one year taught me so much when I grew that 10-foot plant. I was drinking that stuff literally till the next season. Like, I was making tea. I was making hemp rope. I was making... <laughs> How's it going? Hello, hello. You know, though, it is it is a weird fight when people like are like, oh, I like pumpkin pie or I like sweet potato. The internet has made everything into these weird cultural fights. It's food. 
It's food. like when I went to the South, do you know how much I laughed? Everybody eats green eyed peas. Everybody eats collard greens. Like it's not just, oh, these, these people eat this or that. Everybody eats like that over there. Yeah. You know? I have a preference, but I don't need to fight people about it. I'm weird. Like I, I it's crazy to me that you don't eat fish. Oh, I, you know, I really wish that I liked fish. I would have so many more eating options if I liked fish. I've tried. <laughs> that's the, that's the fun at the end, Kilroy. Man, I haven't done that in such a long time. Oh, dear. <laughs> People trying to kill themselves. All right. For those not in the know, don't huff the whipped cream can. It's bad advice. No huffing. That will give you brain damage. It can kill you or leave you maimed. It's awful. Don't do that. Just for but you get the wawas. But you what? get the wawas. I, you know, I have a disclaimer in the beginning of the stream. If you make a bad decision, um, you know, just make sure you're near your phone. <laughs> well, you know, some people don't know it's dangerous, so I just wanted to, just in case there's someone watching that doesn't know. Are you kidding me? Every time my son leaves the house, I'm like, there's no such things as magic beans. If she tells you she loves you, she's lying. Like, I have a whole <laughs> list of things I tell my son. Like, every, and he's like, he rolls his eyes, but I guarantee you, if someone tried to sell him magic beans, he'd tell him to kick rocks. Good. Good. You know, if it's not too good to be true, because I've drilled it in his head, like, there, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's directed at me, but sorry for spoiling everyone's fun. <laughs> the Wawas are, man, never mind. There's a time and a place for everything, and that's college. What is that from? What is that from? That's from a, a movie, or like, I constantly qu uh, quote the first season of Arrested Development because that's, I only watched the first season of that, but like, where is that quote from? I can't remember. When you take a drug like that, it kills a million brain cells at once, and so you literally hear, wah, 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 because it's, it's the death of a million brain cells at once. That oh. is literally what happens when you do too much of that stuff. That sounds awful. Like Mr. Mackey said, drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just like, like magical mushrooms, one of the reasons you freak out so much is because your body is kicking into overdrive and telling you that you're dying. When you die, there's a certain amount of serotonin that gets released, and so that's where the high comes from. It is your brain thinking that you are on your way out. Oh, no, not brain cell mass casualty event. That's why, like, all of those um, whippets, all of that stuff, that's where the high is from. That's why you, you, your vision gets messed up. You get tunnel vision. It's because your brain's trying to compensate. <laughs> like a good time it, absolutely dixie absolutely just say no i worked outreach for a while and like like you have like when you explain to people what they're doing to themselves it's the strangest thing when they get that look on their face like really i don't feel like that like talk to me in 10 years <laughs> oh yeah it's crazy yeah but the funny thing is you can come back from any drug except for meth. Meth bores holes in your brain. And YouTube, this is educational. I'm not promoting anything. But um, you could literally, well, slowly, anything except for that. It bores holes in your frontal cortex. And it leaves you permanently scarred for life. Mentally, literally. Mm. Drugs <laughs> bad. <laughs> but I made a vest. <laughs> and my Friday shows is gonna be is gonna be amazing. Excellent. I want to see. Do you think I can play that Macklemore song, or am I gonna get a um a copyright strike? Well, you could probably play like a couple seconds just to make your point. 
as co and commentary on the song and you know meth will ride you hard and put you away when <laughs> I used to hang out with a lot of old schoolers and they would always say that about people like, oh man, he looks like he was rode hard and put up wet. That reminds me of the old cigarette smoker crowd. Aw, that whole that whole era has aged out. <laughs> it was a huge hit song. You get copyright strike. You know what? I'm going to test it out on my channel because I'm working on a blooper video right now called red yellow leather <laughs> but um i'm gonna put it up on my channel and see what happens plus i need to start i need to start posting on my other channels anyways except oh. for brother neckbeard brother neckbeard would just live on forever i wouldn't play more than a few seconds of it that's what got me in trouble in the beginning, I wanted to share my love for music with other people, and I did not understand that YouTube doesn't care. Well, it's I the have... publishers, the people who own the publishing rights. They care. The artists you are like, great, bring more people on board to our band. Uh, to quote the artist formerly known as Godless Sewing when he wrote in his appeal, I just want to rock out, man. Do you know that legitimately got a copyright strike taken away? I just typed in that sentence. And whoever worked at YouTube was like, this guy's real. This guy, he's not a robot. He's not a robot. I, I just wanted to play a stupid snippet of a song. And I didn't understand the um, the rights and everything behind it. I've learned over the years, but I'm obs I, I listen to music. I listen to all kinds of music. And I think everybody should listen to 90s rap and <laughs> Swedish death metal like I, like I do. <laughs> And they come after me crazy. Everyone I know wants to play music. I just, I, I just eat the copyrights now. Thank you. Thank you. So do I. Do you know, um, I don't know if I'll ever be monetized because most of my videos are copyright. I don't like, and see, that's the thing. Like what Rashawn said, um, they tried to take my channel down over Faith No More two years ago. Now, I bet so many people complained you can actually play that song, but you get a copyright where you can't make money off of it. Mm, all the but like go to them. I'm not even trying to be cool or cash up. I'm not here to make money. If I do, yay. But like, I never got on YouTube being like, I'm going to be the next this or that. So I don't have crazy intention. Like that, I don't. Rashawn has a new... A new avatar. Okay, so speaking of black cats, I remember when Janet Jackson's album came out, Rhythm Nation. <laughs> Several people told me, oh, I really like that, but I don't like that black cat song. It was too heavy for them. I'm like, oh, that's my favorite song. So what's your thought, Rashawn? Do you like the black cat song? Same. If I ever get monetized, they would be getting monetized. I I wouldn't see a cent. Like, you would laugh if you saw all my videos. It's copyright, copyright. That I was flipping through. There was one that didn't have a copyright. I'm like, what the heck did I do on this video that didn't, that, that walked through, you know? You know, I'm biased towards black cats because someone ditched Odin and she's lived in my backyard for four years now. Mm. You know, you know, I'm by, and she has one eye too. I can't remember the Black Cat song. <laughs> it's we are part of the man, the Rhythm Nation dance. <laughs> There's a, a very famous um, radio host named Big Boy, and he recently tried to get Janet Jackson to remember the dance. Uh -huh. She's like, look. She's like, look. Do you know how long ago Rhythm Nation was? <laughs> <laughs> and it's all intricate and stuff too that's not something that you just remember no that's a real dance no it's a real like that is the rhythm nation dance it's an actual mm -hmm. like you know it's named after the video you know mm 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the men in black dance. What is, like mm-hmm. what, what would we call that besides the, you know, the Will Smith men in black dance? Yeah. Somebody leaving a black cat or doorstep sounds like the start of an <laughs> 80s sitcom. <laughs> Oh yeah, I I liked this mostly right. because the kids, the kids show stole it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I now have an army of stray cats in my backyard because they were like, "Hey, you that you see that guy with the wacky pata- with the wacky tobacco in his backyard? He feeds cats." So now it's like a scene to Heathcliff. If you are old enough to remember Heathcliff, do not forget to take aspirin in the morning tomorrow. Whatever. I loved that show. That was my show. <laughs> I'm Heathcliff on the fence when someone I'm singing, someone throws a shoe at me. See, you couldn't have a cartoon like that where someone's like throwing a shoe at a cat. We were built differently back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Jen would probably blow her back out doing it. <laughs> okay, so how do you feel about that? I watch a YouTuber who, it, just how I tell the story about Lenny Kravitz shushing me, his own people are like, uh-oh, don't bring up Janet. He went to a concert in New York five years ago, and she barely danced, and he still brings it up. And his own audience is like, Really? You've been talking about this for five years. Well, but he's obsessed how he paid money and she didn't even move. <laughs> a lot of concerts aren't, they're not so dancey these days. You know, like there are different trends for. Did you hear like when I was defending, when Genuine made a comeback? Um, Alexa. How old is Genuine? Genuine is 53 years old. Look, you're not the same at 23 that you are at 53. Oh, sadly, a, no. When he did a comeback a couple years ago, his dance moves were were a 50-year-old man's dance moves. I lost it on Twitter defending Genuine. I was like, you need to leave Genuine alone. <laughs> and because he gained weight, look, Look, as somebody who had a flat stomach in their 20s, I have a whole um, tire shop going now. <laughs> <laughs> I got the whole lift, the tires on the side and everything. You don't look the same, okay? I lost it when people went after Genuine. What's the statue of limitations? I'm feeling ripped off. Ooh, that's a good question. I've never gone to a concert and felt ripped off ever because I may I've seen Nas Nas jumped out of a helicopter at Rock the Bells and screamed F Bill O'Reilly for 20 minutes. I've never been disappointed. <laughs> I've seen Slayer. I've seen I've seen Ozzy. I've never been disappointed. I, I saw a Tribe Called Quest with Fife Dog at that same concert. That's a really good question. Have you ever been ripped felt ripped off at a show? Um, well, there was one band that I really liked, and for a while they were using stools, and they would sit down on stools for most of their concert. It was so incredibly boring, um, because they were, you know, great performers, and I wasn't expecting, you know, synchronized dance moves or anything, but it just, it, like, it sucked the whole energy out of the concert. Um, totally. So, you know, I never thought about that. I I've even seen no like I used to go to a lot of clubs when I lived in LA. I've even seen like semi-famous people, like the like the third fiddle people. They had tons of energy. I don't mm-hmm. know how I would feel if I went. See, I I've never been ripped off like that. I think we're past peak dance. You'll never see anything like MJ with the backup dancers again. But do you think that's generational? I wish I I had a dad bod. <laughs> I've uh, I'm I am not in no way, shape, or form am I anywhere near what I look like um even five years ago. <laughs> we gotta have to start calling you Jiffy Loop. I like that. I like that. I think you should get one year. <laughs> 
for every hundred bucks. That's true. That is true. Do you know how much money people were spending for Beyonce? Uh, or like Taylor Swift on the secondary market. It's, it's and crazy. Beyonce was telling people like, you need to wear silver. Again, there's people I watch were going out and buying. So not only did you pay money for the concert ticket, but now you're buying some crazy silver outfit because Beyonce is turning a certain age. I happily dance solo in my kitchen. <laughs> Man, you guys see on my videos, I am dancing by myself for real. That's the best <laughs> dancing around in the kitchen. And that putting gangster rap on and cleaning the house is real. I do that. <laughs> I have a whole house cleaning playlist. It's got all kinds of stuff on it. It's under Water Nay if you ever want a weird eclectic list of music old stuff sort of new stuff if you ever walk past my house and hear cnc music factory you better <laughs> run if you're gonna make you sweat baby i'm cleaning the windows <laughs> i'm mopping the floor i'm like wiping the walls that, that might even be on my playlist <laughs> No, I walked in my entry hall and I reached that point in adulthood where I said, who lives in this house? There was like a smudge on the wall. And I'm like, <laughs> I, where did that come from? But I reached that point in adulthood of like, like asking my son, do you have friends at, at the power company? Why are the lights on in here? It sucks for him, though, because I had brothers and sisters I could I could put things on. And we can all play the blame game. It's just me and him. He can't even like, like there are no mysteries in life. Like the other day, this giant cup came in the house. And I was like, where'd this come from? I don't know. I set him down. I said, you know what? There's no such thing as I don't know. It. When, when we have a <laughs> tangible object, like let's think about this. Where did this come from? Because I know I didn't bring it in the house. <laughs> And if there's a third person living here, we need to find them immediately. <laughs> I told you about that. I knew someone that bought a house and there literally was someone living in the um, rafters. Oh, no. I told you about that a while ago. And it like it was a whole thing with like a whole thing. The sheriffs came out and everything. They had somebody living, and it was some rando. And they like had a country house, so it's not like you just like could just. It wasn't in the neighborhood. It was out like way out in the desert, like for That's real. Horrifying. Out in the <laughs> and they discovered they had a whole extra room in their attic they didn't know. Because they put a camera up, like, um, they found, basically, food was missing and stuff, and they ran a camera, and he was there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's awful. I told you that. I think you probably had the same reaction that you have now. <laughs> I saw a YouTube video where someone was, and it was like a news news thing, and someone was complaining about field it was weird like food was disappearing and stuff and they had a neighbor who was crawling through the ductwork in, in their building and crawling out into their kitchen and like taking their food and stuff like that honestly i mm. think stuff like that is psychological because it's pathological it's it's like they're like it's beyond just like being a thief mm. That is a pathological habit. You have to think about it. You have to obsess over it. You have to plan it out. Mm. That's a deep-seated issue. They probably weren't even hungry. <laughs> oh, Kilroy. <laughs> they bought this really big house, and I we still to this day don't know where that person came from. Oh, scary. But Driving towards Vegas, there's a ton of houses though where you're like, okay, they make they make stuff there, they make stuff there. Why is there a chemical cloud over this house? <laughs> One time, there's this weird. There's, I stopped taking weird advice off the internet a long time ago, but about five years, no, about four or five years ago, I got this weird thing off of YouTube. 
and I knew the highway, but it's like you could take this one particular highway all the way to Vegas. Basically, it it says it takes you to the 15. It cuts, it cuts through a lot of red tape. But what they don't tell you is that you're driving on a desert road out in the middle of nowhere for a good 80 miles. Hmm. And, it, and it goes from a neighborhood slowly into the hills have eyes country. Oh, dear. Do you know, like I was driving and driving and driving and I'm like, man, I'm never going to believe the Internet again. And then I saw like a mega center with a target and I'm like, oh, civilization in a Walmart. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> Oh man, I can get a pretzel and a Pepsi. Oh, civilization! But I drove. The... Oh, go ahead. I was driving down from from the Bay Area, and my mom was like, "Oh, you can take this road over here, and it it's faster." So I took this road, and I'm driving along, and I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing but fields, and like there there was nothing and i'm i'm like okay i hope i don't break down this does not seem safe i'm not even sure if i'm still on the right road i called my mom i'm like why did you tell me to go this way <laughs> <laughs> i will tell you though for the record i broke down in my 1983 vw rabbit out in the middle of nowhere and that's where this guy clark taught me to jump start my car and that's when I told you the story about being in San Francisco. Like I thought, I thought I was like a top tier genius because I went to a city that was on a hill and I didn't have a starter in my car. Hopefully, yeah, you need to go to stop jail. facing the right direction. Have a great <laughs> night, Dose. Oh, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> have a good night, Dose. Good to see you. And your fish yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're crawling, man, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna make bucket hats. We're gonna have the bucket hat. We're gonna convert you to bucket hats. <laughs> um. Yeah, this guy needs to go to jail. If you're calling, like that's pathological. That like you need you need professional help. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like if you're doing. Uh, Oh no, Dose is still here. Dose is just ready to go home. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. That's pathological. If you're doing crazy stuff like that, that's like a deep seated issue. Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot deeper than just um, you know. Yikes. Mm. I'm working two more hours. I don't know if I have two more hours in me, but we'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about food in the kitchen. I work, um, <laughs> I like at least four days out of the week. I leave my house at four o'clock in the morning. I have to be at work by 4 30. Mm. But technically, with no stoplights, I get there fairly fast. Mm. <laughs> but the, the donut shop, the donut shop by my house is open, though. They're uh -oh. smart. There's a crowd of people there at four o'clock in the morning. And you know what the funny thing is? Everyone's really polite and quiet. Because well, nobody's good. in nobody's in the mood. <laughs> yeah, nobody needs to be shouting at four in the morning. Four fifteen, if you're yelling, like we, we can't be near each other if you're yelling at four fifteen in the morning. I got you guys running in my office. I had to check on my guys. <laughs> Glad to keep you company. Are you are you um, hoity toity about like uh, gas station coffee? I will drink if it's leaded. I will drink any kind of coffee, and I'm not even saying that. Like I, I'm saying that because uh, I've lived that life. Like I will drink anything from AA coffee to Seven Eleven, that weird place down the street. I was mad. I'm of a certain age. I was mad when coffee was more than 75 cents. <laughs> well, there's a difference between coffee and, you know, like we use the term coffee when really what people mean is like a fancy mocha latte peppermint something with 
whipped cream and sprinkles and drizzle, you know, like not not all coffee is is coffee. So um Kilroy, you are a hundred percent correct. I've seen even the tough guys are like declawed cats at four o'clock in the morning. Nobody is awake enough. <laughs> There are nights, though, that I don't sleep and I go there and people are like, they can tell because I'm way too chipper. Some of the best coffee I've ever had was from a smoke shop. 30 cents a cup. Too long after the average price of a cup of coffee was 30 cents. I miss stuff like that. I miss that. Do you know, if I told you how much at my local donut shop... <laughs> I'll get a ham and cheese croissant, a glazed donut bar, and a cup of coffee, and it's almost 10 bucks. Mm. Inflation has hit us all. And when I go with my son, we like we're in we're spending money plus tip. So it's almost like 15, 16 bucks for donuts. Goodness. I would drink a Red Bull over coffee. <laughs> I um and I am literally the person on the label when it comes to Red Bulls. I'm that person. All everything that's on the on the on the label it says, "Do not do this. Do not like this will happen to you." I'm that guy. I get heart palps. Red oh, Bulls do is. not do. Uh, I start shallow breathing. <laughs> wow. My mom and I had just flown into the UK, and. This was when Red Red Bull was kind of new and we hadn't had one before. And we were at the car rental place and they gave us Red Bulls. And huh. I, <laughs> we both tried it. And I'm like, this actually makes me feel peppy, <laughs> which coffee does not do. <laughs> coffee, like... I'm somewhere in between. I still do things for effect. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't, but coffee still grabs me. Coffee still grabs me. Mm. Co <laughs> Do you know what? I'm one of the. I'm. I'm an anomaly, and I'm not saying I'm special because I know I can't be the only person. Coffee doesn't do any of the stereotypical things to me. Same. I'm addicted to it, though. At this point, it is my blood type. I was telling my son this today. He asked me what uh, blatantly because we don't. <laughs> My son's turning into a man, but he's like, well, what would happen if you stopped drinking coffee? And I looked at him and I was like, I would go through withdrawals. <laughs> and it does what I, it, and it's not like hardcore, but I feel the chemical drop because I drink so much coffee. Oh, got to wean yourself off of that. Yellow Red Bull is so good. I've never, I've never had a monster. I've never, um, I've never had any of that stuff. Couldn't even tell you what it tastes like. I think I've had like two Red Bulls in my life. One of them was after the airport. <laughs> Energy drinks will screw you up. Just drink coffee. When I <laughs> I worked at a Carl's Jr. in Portland, Oregon. Shout out to Fifth in Taylor 2005. And um, when, I, when I was the shift leader. There was this this young kid, and it scared me straight. He drank. Remember those little five hour energies? Oh dear. He was probably 150, 140, dripping wet. He drank one right at the counter. He dropped and passed out, and I had to call the ambulance. Oh my goodness. Guess what? Guess guess what? Old man sewing has never had. <laughs> Couldn't tell you what it smells like, tastes like. That kid, <laughs> that kid hurting himself in front of me scared me straight. It scared, oh. like, yeah, I, he, like, he was young. I was probably 19, 20. Well, no, 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 I, was, uh, I was, like, 22, 23, around there, something in there. My mm -hmm. Portland days are fuzzy now as the years go on. <laughs> he can't weed himself off. He'll go to jail or end up on probation. You end up on probation more around here. <laughs> I was addicted when I was working. I drank several before cutting hair all day. Oh, my goodness. That's I a lot. 
I think that's my justification is of my weird hours, my biphasic sleeping, and the fact that I was raised by pirates. So I drink coffee. I brought an espresso machine back, and my boss literally asked me to not have it, like sent an official memo. So I can't even be like, I didn't see that. <laughs> People don't approve of my espresso behavior. <laughs> Thought experiment. If you drink half of five hour energy, do you get full strength for two and a half hours or do you get half strength for five hours? That's I don't know how it metabolizes. Bleh. I used to drink coffee and energy drinks. Now it's just tea and coconut water. I'm slowly getting there. Do you know what? I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, coffee is like all I drink. And I drink soda too. I drink soda at night though. And Powerade. I am doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee's all I drink, except <laughs> I'm addicted to blue Powerade. And then we buy the case. Oh, and goodness. like my son, he wasn't drinking the purple ones. I started tasting them. I'm like, oh, these are good too. So now I'm addicted to the blue and purple. Um <laughs> See, some things you just can't bring in the house. You you would be um my my cabinets look like the store. Like I told I'm telling you, I eat like an emancipated 13-year-old. I can't help it. I eat so you know what's so funny? Today. Um, I, I told my son, I was like, you know, I really don't feel like cooking. Like, let's go, you know, I'll get you whatever you want. We went to the store and he got like a bunch of stuff for a salad. He bought like boneless chicken breast. And I said, cool. And I called Little Caesars and I was like, I want this and this. And he, to his credit, he hasn't touched the Little Caesars. Mm -hmm. He is, he's, he's going to live forever. <laughs> I do drink sweet tea. I, uh, man, I I had a um, lemon brisk iced tea. I could taste it. I drank that stuff for a solid 10 years. Mm. I was addicted to brisk. I was addicted to um, that Lipton brisk hooked. See, that'll give you diabetes. Those sweet teas, so much sugar and people just like sip, 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 sip. <laughs> when I saw they were selling six and 12 packs of five hour energies, I should have break. I literally, and I, and I'm not even saying this to be funny. I literally do not have the heart for that stuff. Mm. I've never had high blood pressure or high blood sugar. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to get checked. <laughs> Little Caesars is my favorite pizza, maybe because it's cheap as hell. I'm going to tell you, I'm addicted to their garlic dipping sauce. You could put a tire in that stuff and I would eat it. I'm addicted to their garlic butter. And it's literally just margarine, this gelatinous margarine garlic butter, um, amazing creation. <laughs> you could make your own garlic butter. Actually, you know what's really good? I knew when you were going <laughs> When you do your, like, a little bit of, like, olive oil and butter or whatever to make popcorn, put some crushed garlic in there as your olive oil and butter melt and heat up. And then you have to take the garlic out so it doesn't burn. And then you put your popcorn kernels in and it makes amazing garlic popcorn. There's your recipe of the evening. I'm um I I'm weird. I put parmesan cheese on my popcorn. Ooh. That'd be good. I'm oh, it's so good. But that's something I learned as a as a young kid. I miss the old Pizza Hut. Back when, like, you'd go in, they had Ninja Turtles video game there. They were serving pizza and beer. I think I may have one or two of those old Pizza Hut coolers. I went to 84 Charing Cross Road. And instead of a bookstore, it was a Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> I love what they do with the, there's this thing on Twitter where they show the architecture like old Taco Bells were in the shape of a bell and old mm -hmm. Pizza Huts were in the shape of a giant it looked like a giant hat you know and I love how there's a Shakey's Pizza 
on Sunset Boulevard that used to be a Pizza Hut, and they just put a giant shaky sign on top of it, made it look like a hat. <laughs> Domino's makes a nice pizza too, but the outside of their pasta tins always comes out greasy. And I'm a psycho who actually gets the pasta from places that, okay, you're not. I do too. My son's addicted to fettuccine Alfredo from the pizza place by my house. I get pasta. He got the other day. He ordered um, pasta, like spaghetti and meatballs. I looked at him. I said, "Bro, we have that in the cabinet." <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally. Oh, I but I let him get it. You know, you know. He's a growing young man, but I was like, dude, sometimes I feel like Eddie Murphy's mom, like, there's that old joke, like, McDonald's, we got that at the house. Like, oh, no, come here. We got that at the house. <laughs> but my parents were like that. My parents were like, oh, no, we have that here. Like, you want McDonald's? Here. I got ketchup, mustard, bread. <laughs> but it's never the same. Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. I agree. I didn't realize how organic I grew up until I went out in the real world. But you couldn't keep me on the farm when I discovered processed foods. Let's be real. I really hadn't had it my whole life. And then when I discovered it, I was hooked. I ate a McChicken all the time up until my son was like, how long have you been eating McChickens? And I was like, I'm stopping today. <laughs> See, that's what you say, but didn't you? Oh, maybe that. No, that's the egg McMuffin you were talking about. Never mind. Only eat, only eat um, fast food once a year, if that. I something happened to me last year where I just gave up. <laughs> something happened. I don't know what it was from October on of last year. I have my eating habits have complete. I still eat. Well, see, I have to eat a certain way because of my health. And I'll get hypoglycemic if I don't like if I don't eat breakfast. Like I have to eat. Do you remember when Little Caesars gave you two pizzas? Mm -hmm. I told my kids that and they freaked out. I do. Pizza, pizza. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder twin activate. I miss that. You know it's so fun. I I have all these nostalgic talks with my son. Oh, that reminds me the Taco Bell. So on the East Coast, um, do you know how tripped out I was when I went to New York and I found out that like McDonald's and Taco Bell and all these places deliver? This was <laughs> like this was 20 25 years ago. How New is York that was, even they were living in the future compared to us, you know. This is way before Uber Eats. And my local Taco Bell, as I was driving by, it had a sign that said, we deliver. And I thought, like, yeah, 25 years later. I'm, I'm just wondering how that can possibly be economical for, like, you know, like, because the food is so cheap that how are they making enough money to be able to deliver it? I mean, what is the delivery charge? Where we live, though, if you think about it, like, um, I, I told you how much money I spend when I take my, okay, when I go to a, like an actual sit down restaurant with my mom and my son, I pay the same amount that when I, I pay more at like a Popeye's. We pay restaurant prices at our fast food places here. Hmm. I do not have a microwave. Me neither. Mm. Mm. Reminds <laughs> me of somebody I know. <laughs> I do not but, have a microwave. Even when I did, I, I never used it. I have a question, though. How do you mm -hmm. heat up your cinnamon rolls? How do I heat up cinnamon rolls? On well, earth, how on earth would you ever one, heat up? I don't heat up cinnamon rolls because, you know, can't have that kind of thing in the house. But if I were, I would um, put it in the oven or in like the toaster oven or something. I will admit, like I cook my bacon on the stove. Mm -hmm. I There are certain things that would never go in the microwave. Mm -hmm. But like I I get this Uncle Ben's rice. I'm obsessed with that. You put it in a bag, you put it in the microwave, put a little water in it. It's done in three minutes, and it's a giant thing of rice. Well, 
just put it in water on the stove. I give my mic. Thank you. Kilroy and I will give our microwaves a workout. <laughs> really, water, and I, you too? Yep. I find stove and oven cooked food tastes better to me. I have one, but mostly use an air fryer. That's another thing. I'm like, I, uh, my son uses the air fryer. I fry things for real in oil. I still make french fries completely submerged in oil. And someone I know judged me. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, well, they're, they're like, well, you, they're like, you haven't smoked a cigarette in like 10 years, but this is the equivalent of a cigarette. And I was like, stop judging me. <laughs> <laughs> those Uncle Ben's, those Uncle Ben's age are growing mushrooms. <laughs> They're they're so good. I'm addicted. <laughs> um, bags, rather. I feel, I feel you there on the on the keyboard, Dixie. <laughs> I'm addicted to. I love eating rice, and like I like um, anything rice pilaf, Uncle Ben. I don't care what it is, but when I discover the stuff you can put in the microwave, because it's like, you know, sometimes I want rice at two thirty in the morning. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example like the other like one night i went to make rice i turned on the oven and everything I, i'm sorry i turned on the stove i set the water the pot everything i had everything going then i walked in here and forgot that i was making rice so by the time i walked in there the rice was stuck to the <laughs> well that's not a <laughs> not a microwave problem that's a you problem <laughs> but when i forget about uncle ben's it's just a lovely meal waiting for me when i remember to get to the microwave <laughs> don't put down uncle ben's microwave it's good when you just need a little bit of rice thank you i'm i'm obsessed with those things my son judges me too but i'm obsessed I still like I still eat a ton of like Zatarans. I still eat a ton of that stuff, but I'm addicted to those Uncle Ben's things that you can put in the microwave. A rice steamer is much better and just as fast. I was thinking about getting one because I'm addicted to white rice. I want one of those big mm -hmm. ones they have at the Chinese place. I could do that because then I would just be eating it all day. Like, I like the idea of that. Rice cookers are amazing. I have a Zojirushi. It's fabulous. Nothing beats homemade Puerto Rican rice. Mm. Are you Puerto Rican, right. Dose? Now you guys have me craving. Um, <laughs> now you have me craving rice. I have a rice cooker, but they have minimum amounts that you can make. And sometimes that's too much. Exactly. See, that's another thing. Like, one of the reasons my weight goes up and down, like you say, like, if it's there, I'll eat it. So if I made this giant jug of rice, I'll eat it and then gain a, a bunch. Well, they do make small rice cookers. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in Puerto Rican. <laughs> That's like I'm Filipino when I go to the Filipino place. I'm Armenian when I go to the Armenian uh, place. I've been mistaken for Puerto Rican. <laughs> I am not Puerto Rican, but well, that's different. We're rent to ethnics. We could, we, you, could <laughs> you could put us in a movie. We could be an extra in all kinds of things. <laughs> I was, but rice is important. Should I get a right? Should I get now? I'm debating like. Like everybody judged me when I got a deep fryer, but then everybody loves my food. <laughs> like, um, oh man, I get I get crazy with my when I fry food. Like, I have a deep frying pan. Oh, I'm hungry now. I'll have chicken, chicken, and <laughs> dumpling going on at the same time. There's no fun in the small rice cooker, though. I bought the 20 cup one. <laughs> I made it soup in it. Soup? Nice. Can use it as a bread or tortilla warmer. I'm addicted to tortillas. Eating an entire cup of rice is probably better than a chemical bag of rice. <laughs> 
I'm with you I on love, that, Joe. I'm addicted to <laughs> those <laughs> micro microwavable bags. It all started with the rice pilaf because I feel I felt so bougie every time I'd go somewhere and order rice pilaf, and then I found out I could make it at my house. <laughs> I tell my Mexican friends I'm from <laughs> Aguas Caliente because it sounds so cool. Uh, oh, you would love it around here. You'd have tons of names to name yourself after. There's tons of aguas here. Agua dulce. <laughs> oh, now I'm remembering the end of... Um, of uh lower decks when all the california class ships saved the universe that weirdly that weirdly got me emotional i was like man i need to go outside more i need to go touch some grass <laughs> with no pee on it <laughs> i have a i have this weird thing no i have this weird thing when i st like i'm telling you and it's not just that one chicago youtuber i watch but she um it's true. When you start getting delusional, when you start thinking people are after you, you need to go outside and touch some grass. <laughs> YouTube will have you um, spinning around in circles if you let it. They used to make pasta. They they used to make these pasta things in the same kind of bag. Uncle Ben comes in. He has great sauce. I eat so many of those. Okay, Kilroy, I still eat those. They're nor, the nor, those weird nor things. I don't know if that's the same thing, but I eat, I eat, I ate so many of those until one day my son came to me with a consumer report and showed me um, all the jet fuel chemicals and stuff that's in it. I don't care. It's good. He's when my son was younger, we I was randomly watching Dr. Oz and I, you know, I really didn't believe it, but this one was true. Did you know that in Kraft Macaroni, I, since I'll never be sponsored by them, um, there's the same chemical that they use in lube, like the lube lube and a um, property and jet fuel. So there is some chemical that is used to mix in jet fuel that is in the Kraft macaroni and cheese. Well, I, it's hard because a lot of those things are very sensational, but they're reductive. You know, it's like totally there's nitrogen in that. Well, there's nitrogen in my at, in the atmosphere we need it to breathe. You know, so it's it's. Mm. But I will agree are that, that are you defending that because you grew up on it like everyone else? <laughs> no, I actually my mom owned two health food stores. Are you kidding me? I didn't grow up on craft. I only got it at other people's houses. <laughs> but, I grew um, up on it. Um, but so I do take those kinds of things with a grain of salt. However, um there's chemical laden foods and over processed things and they're not always that you can get healthier versions of so i'm not knocking them all together and sometimes you know you're exhausted and you just need to eat but eating that kind of thing on a regular basis is not ideal that's why do you know i was and i got this out of national geographic and i've been quoting it for years there is a town in missouri where the average age is like 42 or 43 years old and Oof. every like the entire like and it's not just that it's like basically missouri but like in the entire state of missouri the average age of the male is like 42 to 45 mm -hmm. Be, and, and most people pass away because of heart disease or some food related disease i thought that was the craziest thing and it's still true i randomly check on it and it's still true to this very day it's i know someone that actually lives in missouri too and i ask him all the time and he's like yeah we eat around here if you walk outside you're probably ingesting more jet fuel than you'll ever eat in your life i used i used to love the box what is that auto grain? Oh, I love on auto gratin potatoes. I'll oh, see now I'm starving. Never seen anyone make those from scratch ever. Neither have I. Have you ever seen anyone ever make the auto gratin potatoes from scratch? <laughs> Whatever the hell they're called. Osterbrotten. Osterbrotten. Smootin' <laughs> I 
keep my ingredients simple. <laughs> Do you know what's really funny? I actually was, um, I would only eat like vegetable, like fruits and vegetables. I had a really good schedule. And then last October, I went straight chili fries and just lost my brains. I don't uh -oh. know what it is. Uh oh. I fell off. Like I was eating healthy for years. It's because I lost all that weight. I gained 50 pounds during COVID and I lost 30 of it. And then last year, I fell off the train. <laughs> I tried potatoes from scratch once. They sucked. Went back to the box. The box is amazing. They're amazing. Now I'm craving those things. That that reminds me. When I was a kid, everybody ate those. <laughs> Have you ever had them from scratch? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe at a restaurant. It's not something I would really be inclined to make at home i mean i could but it's you know it's fiddly so i usually put my fiddly into other things but um well i'm a fiddly person like when i'm making ribs i'll get bored and put cornbread in because it takes three seconds to mix to mix cornbread you know or I've been on this weird garlic bread kick, but then everyone's like, I'm gaining weight and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody wants to eat dinner at my house anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I had them at like other people's houses, but I didn't really have that kind of thing at home <laughs> because my mom is a health nut. My parents were hardcore, like lard cooking, frying, like so. I I had that that um, 1980s, 1990s experience of processing. <laughs> See, that's the thing. My parents grow food, grew food, but they also that was one thing they didn't let us eat fast food. But they like we just basically cooked everything as a kid. Mm -hmm. Like we cooked everything. That's why when I was, as an adult, I meant fast food and went crazy. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm making baked beans, I'll cut a pack of hot dogs into it. I mean, stuffed Ooh. mushrooms for dinner with spinach, kind of fiddly, but good. Sounds good. I kind of laugh because my son has, he's in this health. He's like, he's discovered health, like eating healthy. But because he's a meat eater, like all his kale eating and everything, that's his version of becoming a vegetarian. He's right of that age where people rebel. I always loved baked potatoes and like pork ribs. So I never went through that. Like I'm a vegetarian phase. I scaled back as an adult, you know. Dixie, do you have that cookbook by... um? Is it Anna Thomas? I think Anna Thomas, um, the vegetarian epicure. Let me know if you have that one. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Um, dose. I'm addicted to ravioli, but I talk about this all the time. I It's more conditioned because it tastes exactly the same from when I was a kid. And so I think a lot of it is it's nostalgic for me. And I am a driven by nostalgia. He'll be buying a grill in a deep <laughs> freeze full of meat in 10 years. I guarantee you. He better. He needs to keep the legacy. I actually come from a long line of meat eaters and barbecuers and people that wore like big puffy shoes at the barbecue. Like, I don't think he understands. Like, I, I'm a carnivore. I come from a long line of carnivore carnivores. <laughs> <laughs> I own two, like, Two legitimate size barbecues. I could have a mm -hmm. smorgasbord going at once on, my, on both sides of my house. That sounds amazing. I have one that I built with bricks and one that's a Char King. And I got it on sale when the Sears was going. Like, Sears, when Sears was going under, I bought it. So it's not like I bought it. It's not like I paid a thousand bucks for it. Mm -hmm. I got it on super sale. Nice find. Oh yeah, I but I've trashed it because I've 
I use it, you know, it's, it's, used. it's not trashed, but it's used. I've had to purchase new grills for it. I've had to, uh, you know, take care of it because <laughs> I cook. Easter reminded me, um, because it was just my mom and I. So I said, come over. We, man, we made so much carne asada. It was ridiculous, but it reminded me, um, I'm so glad I replaced everything last season. <laughs> I still love that Chef Bardi stuff. Are you, are you, uh, I don't see you as a hamburger helper, Chef Boyardee, any of that stuff. Eh, not really. I mean, I've eaten it, but, but it's not, not really my thing. Is it good? I don't. Water and A, is it good? The Vegetarian Epicure is such a good cookbook. And I'm not trying to tell everyone they have to be vegetarian. When my mom got that for me, she also gave me a book on like cooking chicken breasts. Um, but the recipes in that cookbook are so good. I highly, highly recommend it. It's from the 70s, so it's kind of funny. Um, but the recipes are amazing. Ooh, Weber makes a grill I have my eye on. It has a little propane burner inside to light the charcoal. Nice. Kilroy says, I have hamburger helper in the cabinet right now. See, very convenient. Do you have some hamburger? I have some hamburger, excuse me, in the fridge I need to cook. But I don't have any hamburger helper. Um, let's see. DJ Dose says, I'm a great friend to take out because I will try anything. I've had all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, dear. This is when William's going to talk about some of the crazy stuff he's eaten through his life. <laughs> I, I don't think I can say on stream half the stuff I've had. Oh, yeah, maybe for the best. <laughs> and one still to this day was to gross out my mother, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't do it again. Let's mm. just put it that way. And I was yeah. in a foreign country. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can say that. And also I think it might be misconstrued as generalizing of people from a certain area that they eat mm. certain things, you know. Yeah. And was it, I mean, was it that or was your dad just messing with you? Maybe it was something else and he was no, just kidding. It, it was the whole hand. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to try different kinds of, different kinds of food and flavor profiles and stuff. That's, let's see. You look on Amazon. They have the, the vegetarian epicure and the new vegetarian epicure. Um, they're both good. My favorite, though, I think is going to be the vegetarian epicure. Um. <laughs> you, can't say, you can't say that out loud, can you? Is the I'm, clap included in that, DJ? <laughs> And <laughs> 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 now we know how DJ Dose met his wife. <laughs> I grew up around Vietnam vets, so I do not flinch at stuff like that. <laughs> There's stuff that I, <laughs> there was stuff that I would hear and then I would go and tell my friends and they'd be like, oh, we didn't hear that one. And then they'd all, we'd all go and say it. <clears throat> when I was a little kid, my dad was part of this organization. They were Vietnam vets, but they would go to Vietnam and bring back deserters, people who just didn't want to come home. But this was like the nineties people, they were still bringing people home. Mm. But when they would have their meetings, like, you know, these guys were grizzled bikers, vets, like, you know, they taught me how to curve. <laughs> <laughs> they taught me, they taught me things that I know for a fact I can't say on stream. Kerroy has the best of the humor. <laughs> absolutely, Kerroy, we love, absolutely. Cricket's chirping. <laughs> Oh man, it's freaking crickets. I do you know what's so funny when people are like crickets are good luck or this or that, and I'm like, you don't obviously you do not live near them. 
Because you're gonna say that until they live in your house. Mm. <laughs> absolutely, Kilmer. Absolutely. We need we need you, Kilmer. We need your sense of humor around here. I can't have these around me. Do you know whenever I um go to Little Caesars, I get two of these. Oh, I didn't it's, know what the, I was trying to figure it, out what those were. Are those crazy little, bread? It's breadsticks. It, breadsticks. Okay. It's just a bunch of a bunch of garlic and parmesan mm. on bread. And I reheat everything in the oven, so it's amazing. And I have when I say pampered chef, you'll know how old my pizza stone is. <laughs> but I have a pampered chef pizza stone. That thing is weathered, leathered. That thing is all it looks like the Romans forged that thing. But every time the pizza comes out perfect, you put it on the pizza stone and put it in the oven. It's like you cooked it on a real pizza oven. Nice. I uh, went through this weird phase during the pandemic of making like bougie, like Italian style pizzas with large, large slices of cheese and everything. And that thing made it perfect, made them perfect. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dixie makes homemade pizza. Nice. So do you make the crust from or do you, do you buy the crust or do you make the crust? Okay, so so Bobbly changed my life. It obviously did not. Do you remember Bobbly? 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 It was just the crust. They would sell it in the store, and you could make your own pizza from there. Oh, oh, yeah. What what, what was the name of that? It was... Um... Bubbly. Yeah. Bubbly. See, you're pedantic, and I'm not. <laughs> That's why they're like, what street is that? Kawangi? You mean Kawanga? <laughs> Look, you see, it says Kawangi in, in plain English, but it people call it Kawanga. I will die on that hill. <laughs> it ends in an A. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when the Pampered Chef craze came through here. Now you can find most of the Pampered Chef stuff you've ever wanted to use in the Goodwills. So true. So true. Bobbly. <laughs> I will. May, are you kidding me? If you put me in a room with a linguist, they would need to go in the into the loony bin after hanging out with me after about a week. <laughs> <sighs> they would be like, "It's Kawanga." <laughs> Comes in a plastic vacuum sealed wrapper. Ooh, Dixie makes their own pizza crust. Nice. Excuse me. I went through a hardcore phase of doing that, and that's one of the reasons I gained 50 pounds during COVID. Mm. I have a yeah. bread maker. I had a bread maker. Do you know what's funny? Before the plague, I didn't know how to use it. Do you know how, what I know how to use now? Is my <laughs> stupid bread maker. <laughs> I remember one day I sat down. I was like, well, I always said if I had time, I'd make bread. And I had time. <laughs> and let me tell you, when you home make wheat bread, it's not healthy because you eat the whole loaf. <laughs> <laughs> In one sitting, in uh, one oh man. See, yeah, that's the problem with all these like, yeah, because you can't make like a just a tiny bit, and it doesn't stay fresh that long because it's all clean and pure and and homemade so to, and. So exactly, you have to eat it right when it comes. <laughs> Um, my son and I, we would sit there like vultures, like in front of the oven, like, well, we have anything else to do. <laughs> Did it rise? Oh, it's rising. Look, it's rising. <laughs> oh, those were good days. Who decided to cook pizza on a stone? Two stone pizza cooks. It's good, though. It's so good. There is this really, really bougie. You know, it's funny. It's really bougie, but it's not 50 bucks a plate. There's this bougie place by my house that cooks it like that. It's so good. Mm. I only bought it once. I preferred to get the Chef Boyardee pizza kit. 
I I um when I remember when I was a kid, I made a big deal because my parents were like, "We're not getting bubbly," and we got it, and and it was amazing. And I've made it a few times. It comes with the sauce. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. I think they that sell would, that here too. That would work well for you, Kilroy, because you like the Chef Boyardee sauce. So it's all there together. <laughs> Jenny can cook on YouTube has great bread, great bread, easy recipes. Ooh. I don't. I need to go find all my double XL clothes that are hidden in the back. Of the <laughs> I bury because if I start eating bread again, I have to go resurrect all my old clothes. Mm. <laughs> I I'm gonna go. Sh I'm gonna go find a picture. Like at the height, I gained fifty pounds, but I kind of like my weight. I was a hundred. I was one hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy my whole life. So. I like being over 200. Mm. It's easy to keep homemade bread. You can you just can't cut into it for a while. It's still hot and warm. Let it cool completely down before breaking into it. Oh, you, I got huge off of bread. Fresh flour tortilla. There is a chain by my house. It's called Vallarta. And they make fresh tortillas. They make bidia. They make everything. And their beef ribs, the only way I can describe it, because I'm of a certain age, it reminds me of Dino from the Flintstones. Their beef ribs are this big, and I'm not even telling fish stories. It's huge. Well, that's how I remember that's how big they used to be when I was a kid. Are do they not come that size anymore? I almost made out with my microphone. I was trying to go like this, but I made a <laughs> My son hates it when I say this, but now they're all sad cows. I'm addicted to beef ribs. Like, I love beef ribs. They're all just sad cows now. They're skinny. Hmm. Now I'm craving tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> Do they make a disposal kit for <laughs> touching stuff? Wow. Kilroy's coming out with the fighting words. <laughs> One day when I, when I, um, it, see, but like if I pulled out all my sewing machines, I'd have to admit to myself that I had a problem. <laughs> you have to pull them out. Just turn, just, just do a quick, you know, gander around the room. <laughs> Remember we did that and I stopped counting at 70, just uh -huh. visible in this room. And I've added more too. Oh my god, it's yeah. deceptive though because with the tables, like there's tables, and then the, and then there's two sewing machines sitting on each table, mm. or like one might be out, but there's a sewing machine behind that. You know, mm. <laughs> and I you know understand. what? Hmm? Somebody has to be the curator of the Touch and Sew Museum, and I will take that task. It's the ancient well, order, ancient order of the touch and throw. If you just had one of each model, but no, you have multiples. So I, I'm not, I'm not buying that. <laughs> Coming with the logic. <laughs> Thank you, Spock. I'll be playing Captain Kirk this evening. No. <laughs> My motto is, why have one when you can have 25? Throw a touch of a five-story tower. I'd have to fill out permits. I know for a fact I would have to fill out permits. That is something I'd have to, like, they're, they're crazy about that now. Speaking of towers and dinosaurs, do you watch that channel? I think it's it's Australian. And they have a tower and they drop things off of it and do slow-mo filming and say, what would happen if we drop all of this onto this other thing? Let's okay. make a video. So A, I do watch that channel. And B, <laughs> I want to have a property. Like, like see, where, where I live in California, what they do is kind of illegal. I'd have to fall. I'd have to do a pile of paperwork to do what they do. Hmm. So I love that Isaiah used to watch that when he was younger. Mm -hmm. I love that channel. David sewing. <laughs> I, 
I need to get a um I need to get a band in here. I need to get somebody with glasses and rock and blazers like Paul Schaefer. <laughs> Kilver said. Oh, sorry. I'd rather have a real steak than ribs. I'm addicted to beef ribs. I have no, like I've been like that my whole life. It's the barbecuer in her. Like I grew up around barbecuers, smokers. I literally just had this conversation with my mom because she was like, you're insane. Because I grew up in a house where we ate steak every other day, I don't eat steak as much as I used to. Mm. I eat a I lot guess... more like chicken and pork. Steak is very convenient compared to ribs. Ribs are messy. <laughs> But I think it's because um, my my pops was a steak guy, so that's yeah. all we ate, you know. Yeah. And I now, in my adult life, I'm like, man. And people think I'm crazy, but like, I'm just not a steak person. I'll eat it. I'm not gonna put my nose up. I'm not gonna be like, oh, oh, I'm not gonna eat this luscious, glorious steak. <laughs> <laughs> this amazing smelling, like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not like that. But like, you know. And like growing up, like he would eat anything from the two buck chuck to like the top, you know, top of the line stuff, you know. One of the best meals I had, I was on vacation and my honorary cousin and I went to this restaurant we had seen earlier. And they're like, do you have a reservation? And we said no. And they're like, we're sorry, we're like full. So we're at that point, we're like, well, what are we going to eat? So we went back to our B&B and the B&B um called the local pub and said, Hey, we've got, you know, two guests. Can you feed them? I mean, like this was like a rest, a restaurant pub. Um, and they said that, yeah, they could just give us something really simple because it was late. So we dashed over there and I had a steak, a buttered steak and broccoli. And it was like the whole tree of broccoli, this steak. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. And then we had sticky toffee pudding for dessert. Oh, practically had to roll us out of there it was so good <laughs> i love that line when you have to be rolled out like you're, <laughs> like like the oompa loompas are rolling you out of charlie in the chocolate factory <laughs> i'm not a big steak person either i'd rather have wings are you a wing person um they're all right they're a little they're a little fiddly like they like they taste good but I don't know, like a chicken thigh, boneless chicken thigh would be way more convenient. But the flavor is good. You know what ruined me is when they started selling the whole chickens at grocery stores. Mm. That Because, man, like for like eight bucks, nine bucks, I don't know what they are now. They're more expensive. But like I go crazy on those. It's hard for me because like. I just can't eat that much chicken before it before it spoils. I have this really weird, I call it like I've um, lived alone or been by myself off and on since I was 17 years old. So I call it like a single man meal prep. My <laughs> of me. Boy but dinner. I'll, <laughs> I'll get something like that and cut it in half. And then put it in the fridge and pick at it all day and then eat the next half the next day. The best fried chicken I have ever had came from a supermarket. I'm the same. You know what's really funny? I actually stopped going to the Safeway near my house because the prices just weren't competitive anymore. I still go to their deli because it's better than everyone else. And I get fried chicken and I... It's so sad. I'm addicted to Alaskan polyp. I eat their seafood salad, but really it's just chopped Alaskan polyp. I'm addicted mm. to it. It's fish, but I'm addicted to it. And it's just relish and mayo with fish, but I am addicted to it. They have this really weird bow tie pasta, but again, I'm addicted to the pesto. Ah. My uncle used to say that people didn't really like lobster. They just liked the drawn butter. <laughs> That's so true because they are bottom feeders. 
That is so true. You get a good big tail. Like I knew someone who was a shopper and they taught me how to shop. And around here we have what's called fish Fridays every Friday. And you can get like outrageously priced fish that's affordable. And so I grew up eating lobster tail and all of that. I think they're amazing. People like, like they're, where I'm from, you can get the small ones still and they're still affordable. I've seen ones up north for a hundred dollars. They're like 10 bucks here. So I don't, I don't know if it's because I live near the ocean. I don't know. Hmm. Are you talking about like, the comparison of restaurant prices versus supermarket prices. Oh, there's no comparison. Yeah. There's no comparison. <laughs> I'm, uh, um, I'm the place by my house. They make bomb fried chicken. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. Like I go there all the time and I get this weird seafood salad it's my weird Sunday tradition now. I go to my job, make sure it's still standing. And on my way home, I go to my local Safeway and I get fried chicken, this weird seafood salad, and this weird um, pesto bow tie thing. And that's it. You're it's set for the day. For a couple of days. Cause I get like, <laughs> and that's another thing. Like when I, when, um, I was more of a job site kind of guy, like on the site, I discovered there's this place they've gone under. They were called Ralph's, <laughs> but I used to get a sandwich from that place. They would give me an entire French bread roll with all the fixings, everything on it for six or seven bucks. Wow. It was literally the size of two foot long. <laughs> Good gracious. And I would, um, I would bring it to work and feed people. That's how big this thing was. I took a picture of one where I was at work and I took a picture of half of my, like half of my sandwich. It was the size of my hand. It was huge. Wow. But that place went under. So we, I'm not eating like that at lunch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and also um, shrinkflation is real. Have you, have you experienced that at all? Um, Yeah. Yeah. I told you about my muffins. I stopped buying those things. They were literally the size of a, a I have these weird coffee plates because it's not because I'm bougie, it's because I'm a spiller and a dripper. <laughs> <laughs> so I have coffee plates everywhere. And I had these muffins that were literally the size of a coffee plate. Wow. Yes, I have. Thank you, Joy. They're doing it in Canada too. Mm -hmm. And now for the same price, um, they're literally a third of the size. Mm. All packaging. Um, they've Chips Ahoy now has this weird paper mix, like this weird, like recycled paper. They no longer use plastic on their products. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> I went to a Mexican buffet once because I thought it was a myth. I was defeated <laughs> after the first place. As an expert, as somebody who is an expert, you got to pace yourself. <laughs> There's a Mexican restaurant up the street from my house. They have a brunch where they, they call them, um, they call them Mexican pancakes, but they make the same things in France. They're just a different shape. That's like literally it's just, they're just long instead of instead of circular. Okay. And it made me laugh because they eat the exact same thing in France. But anyways, um that place will have you literally like oh in the parking lot. Mm. I can't Mo eat that much at once. And that's why no one, that sentence right there is why no one will go with me. I I always tell my mom, like, when um, I'll call her and I'm like, oh, you're awake. Do you want to go to the buffet with me? And she's like, I have things I have to do today. Because <laughs> <laughs> once you eat there, like, you're going to nap. You're going to nap. I just hate that, that stomach stuffed 
feeling. It's just, it's so uncomfortable. I just, I can't eat that much at once. With everything that I am, I miss our local hometown buffet. Hmm. They, that place went under. I miss that place. And they tried a golden corral. And I miss that place too. But it went under because people aren't fish eaters here. Like they thought they were. The nice thing about a buffet is you get like lots of different things to try. So that I always appreciated that. But I find it's not economical for me because you pay like more than you would to get a, a dinner somewhere and then you don't get to take anything home with you. So that is really, true. Yeah. They do factor in the fact that like they factor in, you know, basically you're paying for two plates and a drink or it's the same thing you'd pay at like a fancy restaurant kind of. Yeah. But at a fancy restaurant, I get to take my leftovers home and eat a couple more times. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Even Olive Garden lets you take stuff home if you order all you can eat. Hmm. Somebody I know who is the pettiest human on planet Earth actually did a 45-minute video on that. <laughs> on YouTube. <coughs> But they, they constantly preface their channel with, like, look, I know these are nothing but first world problems. So, you know. All right. We've been going all night. Look at you, Polish and Assembled. You, you, you hung the whole time. We've gone around <laughs> Jupiter twice this evening. It felt like four times. <laughs> I'm wearing my glasses. Tonight has been... Definitely, we have shablammed. We came, <laughs> we saw, we conquered. I would like to thank everybody. DJ Dose, Joy, thank you so much. Kilroy, as always, thank you, number one. Alibaba, when you wake up and the stream's over, you're appreciated. <laughs> to anyone else who's fallen asleep to this, hello. <laughs> But in all seriousness, um, I want to thank everybody. I'll be back at it on Saturday. You know, I haven't been feeling it lately, but um, as far as going out, because the weather's been terrible, but the sun's out. So we'll see where the, and I have my, my cars fixed. So I'm definitely going to go on an adventure this weekend. Don't forget Dixie and Rashawn. Absolutely, Dixie. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much, Dixie. You are absolutely appreciated. Rashawn, absolutely, absolutely. DJ Jones, thank you so much. Close to the end of my... <laughs> hey, we're here for you. We are definitely here for you. Kilroy, as always. I'll be back at it on Saturday. I want to thank everybody. I did not think I was going to go this long this evening, but here we are. <laughs> wow. Like I always say, reinforce your seams, be yourself, and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye. See you guys next time.